Look at that. Look how fast he's here. Look how fast he's here.
Good morning. All right. The first thing I want to say is I get a call from my mother last night and my mother-in-law saying, why did you have your phone on the bench? So I want to clear everything up. That was not my phone. That was a call through the computer system because I guess we have an open line for remote witnesses. So that it came through the computer system. Jamie says it's never happened before. But it came through the computer system and she hung up on it. So just for the record, that was not my phone. Okay? So I don't need that kind of grief from my mother, all right? Come on. Okay. Thank you. All right. So I think before the jury comes out, we do have one issue with Exhibit 2, is it uh, Exhibit 548? Plaintiff's Plaintiff's Exhibit 548, okay. So you had offered it to come into evidence, and I know there was an objection. There's a lot of hearsay on it, and so you're... Is there a redacted copy for me, or is that something you haven't worked through? We haven't seen it. Okay. Okay, that's fine, Mr. Chu. I think it was her witness, but uh, <laughs> that's fine. Well, I know it's their exhibit, but it's you're offering it. And, and so if you're offering it, you have to redact it to basically, I think it's those two. Well, I just wanted to make sure. I know there. I think we can work out the details from that now. Okay, if you could work out the details, so uh, you owe me one exhibit, so we'll get that at some point today, right? Or even if I guess tomorrow when I see you guys, that's fine. Okay, perfect. All right. Anything else preliminary before the jury, Mr. Rottenborn? One, one brief matter, Your Honor. May we approach? Yes, that's fine. Okay, are we ready for the jury? Yes. Okay.
Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. All right. Your next witness. Okay, by video. I'm doing that two seconds earlier. Can you get the screen up? I like to get the screen up before. I'm, ladies and gentlemen, we usually try to get the screen up before you, because of that, uh, the sound, but we'll get it up for you. Good morning, Ms. James. Can you please say your full name? My name is Catherine Olwyn James. What's your current address? Have you ever spoken with Ms. Vasquez before today? Yes. When? I don't recall. What was the substance of that conversation? I don't recall. Was it in the past month? No. Was it in the past year? Yes. Did you talk about this case? No. What did you talk about? I don't recall. If you don't recall, how can you recall that you didn't discuss this case? Have you discussed this case or the UK litigation with Mr. Waldman? I just, yes, I discussed the UK case with Mr. Waldman. 
Uh, what did you discuss about the UK case with Mr. Walter? Your Honor, can we, can we stop this, please? Okay. I don't have a call. Can you can pause, us. please? No details whatsoever that you recall? No. Did Miss? You could, there you go. All right, you want to approach? Um, or, sure. I'm not sure. Ladies and gentlemen, in addition to the uh, video deposition, there are some extra statements that this witness made um, that aren't part of the video, but it's part of her testimony. So Mr. Rottenborn is just going to read those uh, into the record and for you as well. Okay. Question. Have you spoken with Adam Waldman before? Answer. Yes. Question. When was the last time you spoke with him? Answer. I don't recall. Question, how many times have you spoken with him? Answer, I would say somewhere around 10 times total. Question, have you spoken with him in 2022? Answer, yes. Question, what was the substance of that conversation? Answer, friendly banter. Question, about what? Answer, nothing to do with the case at all. Question, what was it about? Answer, we have gotten to know each other, and, you know, I was on vacation, said Happy New Year, that's it. Question, did you call him or did he call you? Answer, I didn't call him. Question, did you text him? Answer, I sent a message saying Happy New Year to a lot of my friends. Question, over text? Answer, yes. All right. Thank you, sir. All right. You can continue the video. Altman assist you in preparing your witness statements for the UK litigation? No. Did you exchange drafts of those statements with Mr. Walden? No. Who did you send those drafts to? Shillings. Is every word in those witness statements words that you drafted? Yes. Did anyone provide edits to those witness statements for your consideration? I'm very good at my own editing, I can assure you. That didn't answer my question. Did anyone else provide edits to those witness statements? No. For now, you've spoken with Mr. Depp since he and Amber got divorced, correct? Correct. When was the last time you spoke with him? You can answer. I don't recall. Was it within the past year? No. In any day prior to today, have you exchanged text messages with Mr. Depp? Yes. When was the last time, approximately, that you exchanged text messages with Mr. Depp? Uh, I would say 2016. Oh, yeah, I think 2016, but it's a long time ago. When was the last time you spoke with Amber Heard? I don't recall. Was it shortly after your employment with her ended in 2015? No. Was it after that? No. Do you, have you spoken with her to the best of your recollection or communicated with her in any way in the past, say, five years? No. 
when were you um, when were you hired by Miss Hertz? In 2012. Um, how did you meet her? Her sister put an ad through, uh, you know, a recruitment uh, system I use in my field. Um, take me through your the chronology of. Um, well, let me ask it this way. When did you, would, would you describe your, your work for Ms. Hurd as a personal assistant? Is that what you'd call your job title? Yes. When did you first start working as a personal assistant? In 1999. How many, for how many people have you served as a personal assistant? Maybe uh, six. Since you um, left Ms. Hurd's employment in 2015, for how many people have you served as a personal assistant? One, that's the same person I work for to this day. I've been with him for six and a half years. Ms. James, have you had any other jobs since, other than this, this personal assistant job since you left Ms. Hurd's employment? No. Now, your work for Ms. Hurd was, was it part-time or full-time? It started as part-time and became full-time. When did you change from part-time to full-time? I don't recall. What were your job duties? Too many to mention. Give me your best summary of what your job duties were, please. Mm -hmm. is, is this relevant? Okay, so let's see. I mean, if you are ready for a really, really long time of me explaining all of the details, that's fine. It's everything you could possibly do to run someone's life, okay? So it is grocery shopping. It is taking care of admin. It is running errands. It is getting the car fixed. It is getting the dogs groomed. It is picking up flowers. It is dealing with the decorator. It is dealing with the housekeeper. It is going on and on and on and on, and it goes on every single day arranging travel, dealing with all of the surplus staff around the travel, booking all the greeters, dealing with the changing of travel, okay, liaising with people that she's working with on films, updating her calendar accordingly, uh, liaising with the people on set every single day to update her calendar to ensure that she knows what scenes she's doing each day, what her call time is, or every day it's something different. But it's a lot, it's a myriad, a myriad of things that go across the board daily. You were paid for that work, correct? Very poorly. What were you paid? Was it $1,500 a week to start? Are you kidding? That... I wish, my God. No, it was not. She paid me $25 an hour to start off with, and she finally agreed after screaming abuse at me that she would pay me $50,000 a year once I went to full time. And this was after me working for well over 10 years as a personal assistant. So it was very insulting to me, but I did it anyway because I had grandfathered in the ability to pick up my son from school and bring him to work with me at 3 o'clock. And you could have left Ms. Hurd's employment at any time, correct? Yes. You were based in Los Angeles when you were providing personal assistance services to Ms. Hurd, right? I have always lived in Los Angeles since 1999. So you didn't travel with Ms. Hurd when she was out of town, correct? That was another part of our agreement that I wouldn't travel with her because of my child. And she was out of town quite a bit, right? Not really. Not really? How many weeks a year would you estimate Ms. Hurd was out of town while you worked for her? Well, you're talking uh, almost 10 years ago, so I can't tell you quite honestly. But when she was out of town, you wouldn't see, um, I, you, you you never traveled with her, right? No. Jack, how much did you see uh, Mr. Depp over the course of your employment with Ms. Hurd? Regularly. 
how many times well obviously you didn't see him when he was out of town right no when he was in town was it would you see him daily weekly monthly what what, what would you estimate uh, there is no rhyme or reason to to the to answer that question now you never witnessed any violence between Miss Heard or Mr. Depp, right? No. And Miss Heard never told you that she had been violent to Mr. Depp, correct? No. You had knowledge that um, Miss Heard and Mr. Depp had arguments, correct? No. Miss Heard never told you that she had and Mr. Depp had had arguments? Occasionally, she'd send a text message complaining about her mental state, but it was, it was never clear exactly what was going on. Okay, so you never... It was I'm like, sorry. I remember she would text me complaining uh, about her mental state, and that was about it. I don't have any of the text messages, so it's hard to remember. Do you recall hearing anything about uh, an alleged incident between Amber and Johnny on a flight from Boston to LA around this time frame. Like I said, I remember that day very well. And and um, to, to, to follow up on that, I, I'm not asking just about what Amber may have told you. I'm just trying to drill down generally to what you may have heard, whether from Amber or Johnny or anyone about that flight. Does that make sense? So can you tell us what do you remember hearing about that flight or what happened or didn't happen on that flight from Boston to LA? I don't know. Sitting here today, you don't remember anything that you heard about that? I don't know. I wasn't on the plane. I just know what happened afterwards, okay? When she asked me and to come meet her at the shuttle. Did you think to ask her if she was okay? You know, I probably did because that's my role to play a caregiver. That's all I can imagine. So what do you remember about this day um, that you alluded to earlier? Mostly my surprise that they went to the Chateau of Marmont because Amber had an apartment of her own in West Hollywood that was like completely set up and available to her. So I, that was my biggest confusion. Like, why did she go to the Chateau? And then she asked me to get her bathing suit. I remember that. So I had to go to her apartment to get her bathing suit, which again, seems strange to me. And then um, I, what also seems strange is when I got there, she had a bunch of friends with her. And it's originally, it, I thought she was alone. Did, um, when you refer to Amber's apartment, are you referring to the apartment on Orange Avenue? Yes. And isn't it true that Mr. Depp would spend time in that apartment with Amber time to time, correct? Well, I don't really know what the question is in relation to, but he wasn't there at that time, if that's what you're referring to. Yeah, no, that's not my question. My question was just over the course of your employment, you have knowledge of Mr. Depp spending time at that Orange Avenue apartment, they spent right? spent time there and at his residences. They would go around different were you concerned about Miss Heard and her well-being on this day? No, because it had become a pattern with her, and so I was merely placating her, I would say, and especially when I saw she was there with about four or five girlfriends and basically having fun, enjoying See. each other down by the pool. That's why she needed a swimsuit. And then they proceeded to hang there all day drinking uh, while I sat around waiting. Um, with my son, actually, I think it was a Sunday that day, I remember. We had to wait all day and while they just hung around drinking by the pool. And then uh, finally I went home and finally she went back to her apartment. And then she wanted me to go back and pack her bag for her at about 10 o'clock at night on Sunday. And I said I couldn't go by that point. I'd already spent the whole day sitting there. So I said, I couldn't go and pack a bag because it, I'd already put my son to bed and she was very angry about that. I remember that. 
Okay, so let's. So when you asked her if she was okay, you didn't actually care if she was okay. You said you were just placating her, right? It was a standard standard procedure at this point. She was a very dramatic person. So you you didn't actually think that there was anything um, that, that that Amber was actually upset, correct? Um, as I said, it just didn't make sense that she went to the shuttle instead of going home. That that was the first red flag for me that day. Mm-hmm. So, so you, so you, you came to the conclusion that day that any, she actually wasn't upset. Is that what you're saying? It's too much. I mean, I already answered once. What I'm asking is, that, did you, did you come to the conclusion that there was nothing wrong with Miss Heard that day, and that she wasn't actually upset? I don't know how to answer. I mean, it's such a strange question. Like I said, you already asked me and I already answered. I'm asking to answer it again. I don't think I asked the exact same question, but do your best, please. Could you ask me the question in a different way or a clearer way that is not exactly the same as the last question you asked me? Did you reach the conclusion that day that Miss Heard hadn't experienced anything traumatic? Over the course of the day, I observed Miss Heard enjoying the company of her friends for several hours. That's all I have to say on that matter. And would it be odd for someone who's experienced trauma to want to be around friends? Yeah. To you? Yeah, I, I don't know. So in any event, you, you, um, you said you sat around at the Chateau Marmont, is that right? Yes, well, she was deciding what to do. Now, you were being paid for that time, correct? Not overtime. It was a Sunday. I was not being paid, no. Did you um, did you avail yourself of anything um, at the hotel? Like, did you order any food? No. Did you I might have order? I might have ordered some food for my son, actually, to be honest. Now I think about it, because he was only little at the time. I think he was... You know, five or something. So I, I might, I might have ordered food for my son. I'm not a big eater. Food is not a huge priority for me. Did did you would you put that on Miss Hurd's tab that day? Everything was on Deb's tab that day, so no. On Johnny's tab. Yes. Let's bring up the document entitled uh, or that ends in six one five one, please. Showing the three on the screen. When she wrote, I love you, and you wrote, love you too, hon, won't be long, X. Um, was that just placating, Miss Hurt? Standard friendly text exchange uh, in my role of work. Were you trying to be supportive at all or, or just placating her? A bit of both, I guess. Did you have any concern whatsoever about Miss Hurd's well being that day? No. When was the first time that you remember uh, Miss Hurd telling you that um, all wasn't right in the relationship between her and Mr. Depp? I don't recall exactly when it started, but it was usually um, her complaining and crying uh, uh, due to, I would say, insecurities within the relationship more than anything else. Uh, She would be very, very insecure a lot of the time, and she would call me up crying. I remember one time she called me when she was alone in New York City, and she was crying, walking around the street, crying. And he wasn't there, she was alone, but I said to her that she needed to go inside because I was worried that the paparazzi might take a photo of her and she was in a very dysregulated state. And so just out of kindness, I, I said to her it was better if she went inside rather than walking around crying in public. Uh, I remember that, but I don't remember exactly when that was. It might've been 2012 or 2013. Um, as the um, as the job went on, we called each other less and less and did mostly text messaging. It was all text messaging we did. Did you, um, did you ever believe that Mr. mistreated her? No. 
So, and why not? Just never any evidence of it at all. I was there almost daily in uh, both her place and then eventually at uh, his place in West Hollywood and then ultimately at the, the lofts downtown. It was a daily basis experience, morning, noon, night, all days of the week. So, you know, I mean, I never once saw any evidence of anything. Did Miss Hurt ever tell you that Johnny had hit her? No. Did he ever tell you, did she ever tell you that Johnny had pulled her hair or pushed her? No. Well, let me ask it a little bit differently. You never believed Miss Hurd that Mr. Depp had mistreated her. Is that correct? At the time or after? I never believed it. In what context are you talking about? During my employee or afterward? During, During your employee? No, never. And there was never any damage to the apartment that I witnessed. There was never any aftermath of anything ever that I ever saw. Now, you, of course, have no personal knowledge one way or the other whether um, Johnny was abusive to her, correct? Well, I don't know if that's necessarily true, because if it was true, I would have seen the damage even if I wasn't physically present in the moment of, of these alleged arguments. And what's your basis for that statement? Well, if someone's being beaten, there's generally physical evidence. So your testimony is that if there's if, if there was no physical evidence that you observed, then it couldn't have happened, the domestic violence by Johnny toward Amber. Is that your testimony? No. Well, I'm trying to, to understand what your testimony is. Um, maybe you could clarify for me, Ms. James. Um, is your testimony that... Um, if you never saw firsthand evidence of Johnny being violent to Amber, that it couldn't have happened? That's not what I said. You're trying to put words into my mouth. I don't appreciate that. Can you pull up the document that is... Um, it, well, let me see what it ends with here. It's the doc, um, DEP 11432, please. Sean, is it four on the screen? Can we Could you pause for a moment? I'll direct your attention to the. Um, Okay. This is this is a document that um, we're just looking for the corresponding trial exhibit. If you could just bear with us for one minute, um, and then we'd like to um, move move for admission of it. All right. What's the number on it? That's what we're trying to figure out. Okay. Sorry. It's a bit delay. <laughs> Your Honor, it's, it's trial exhibit 844. All right. And that's defendant's 844? Yes, ma'am. Okay, 844. Any objection to 844?
All right, if you want to approach then, uh, if somebody has a copy of 844 for me. Yeah, can you, can, can oh, we'll, 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 we'll get it. We'll, we'll, we'll get it. That's all right. Oh, we'll get it. box at the bottom. Mm -hmm. Do you see your name, Kate, in that, um, the column labeled participants? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is this a text message that you received from Mr. Depp um, on or around August 13th, 2016? Yes. And it, it appears that he's responding to something that you had sent him, correct? I don't know. You see where he says, thank you, sweetheart? Yes. He's directing that to you, right? 
It looks like there's someone else CC'd on this text, so it could be to that person. I honestly don't know. I can't answer your question. Can we please pause the video? Okay. All right, could you pause for a second? Thank you. He already did. That was good. Thank you. Nice work. Can you switch and Your Honor, to... I'd like to... Um, we'll switch, we to... switch to our... Okay, questions. that's fine. Thank you. <laughs> not yet, but don't... Not yet. Make sure it's set right. Publish it. All right. And Your Honor, with the um, with the stipulation that we'll prepare a redacted version to be entered into evidence that has other personal identifiers redacted, we'd ask for permission to publish to okay. admit this into evidence and publish to the jury. All right. The objections are noted, um, and we will get the redacted copy. All right. So Thank you, Your Honor. Ready to, Ready to resume with the video. Thank you, Your Honor. All right. Do you see where he says, um, we'll hit you when I get back, doll. Come over for a spot of purple and we'll fix her flabby ass nice and good? Yep. Um, come over for a spot of purple means come over for a drink of wine, right? I don't know. That's what you understood it to mean, correct? I don't know. Lucian, can you pull up the documents um, labeled UK trial day seven, James testimony, please? And Ms. James, you remember giving testimony in the trial in the UK, right? Uh, well, there'd be something wrong with me if I didn't. And in I'm that, need order in the court. When you gave that testimony, you. you gave it under oath, correct? Yes. Um, Lucian, can you please go to page 39 of the PDF? And can you please blow up um, the page that uh, is labeled 1221? And on line seven, um, Ms. James, is it, am I reading this right? You were asked the question, and he is inviting you over for a spot of purple. What is that? Yes, is your answer. Question, what did you understand? And you answered red wine, I imagine. You see that? Yeah, I do remember that. Remember giving that testimony? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So is it your understanding that um, Mr. Depp was inviting you over for um, for wine um, at some point after he split up from Miss Heard? And just speculation. Did you go? Uh, did you meet up with Mr. Depp um, for red wine around the time period of this text on August thirteenth, twenty sixteen? I did meet up with him, but we did not drink red wine, no. Was anyone else present for that meeting? No. When he said, come over for a spot of purple and we'll fix her flabby ass, you understood him to be referring to Miss Hurt when he um, said, we'll fix her flabby ass, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it wasn't for me to speculate what he, what he was referring to. And I, I'm not asking for you to speculate what he was referring to. I'm asking for your, your understanding was that he was talking to Ms. Hurd, correct? You can answer. There isn't an answer. I mean, this is the way he writes. It's very random and you don't sort of question it, okay? It's just the way he writes. He writes in a very abstract way. Okay, um, Lucian, if you can just pull up the, the, the prior testimony that we just looked at. Ms. James, um, isn't it true that um, on line 12 of page 1221, you were asked the question, red wine, and not only to come over for a spot of purple, but to fix her flabby ass. That was about Miss Heard, was it not? And on line 14, you answered, yes, yes. Do you see that? Yes. Mm -hmm. So you, you did understand this to be referring to Miss Heard, correct? 
I'm sorry, you said no? Just trying to be agreeable in the in the court, having no clue what on earth is going on. So there you go. I have no clue. Was that answer in the court truthful or just agreeable? Just being agreeable. So it wasn't truthful? You can answer. I don't have an answer for you, Mr. Rosenborn. What did you and Mr. Depp talk about at that meeting that you recall? I don't recall details. Just tell me generally everything you recall. It's too long ago, Mr. Rottenborn. I don't recall. Do you recall anything? No. Where was the meeting? At his residence in uh, West Hollywood. Is that um, his residence? What? I'm sorry. In West Hollywood. What time of day? Um, about three p.m. Um, so you recall the time of day, but you don't recall anything you discussed? No, I'm just saying, I know it was in the afternoon because it was after I picked my son up from school because my son went to swim in the pool with the security guards watching him while I went and had a brief conversation with Mr. Depp. That's the only reason I remember the time. Did you talk about Miss Heard? Yes. What did, what did you discuss about Miss Heard? Uh, like I said, I don't recall the details. Well, I'm, I'm just a little confused because you just testified you didn't remember anything, but now you remember that you did talk about Ms. Hurd. So I'm, the, what I'm trying to get is everything you remember about the conversation. Well, you've got to understand, Mr. Rottenborn, the, the mutual um, connection between Mr. Depp and myself is, in fact, Mr. Her Ms. Hurd. So inevitably, that is going to be part of the conversation. That's all I remember. Do you remember anything else about that conversation with Mr. Depp? No. Have you seen Mr. Depp since that conversation? No. Now, um, what's your, just describe generally your educational background, please. I completed high school and then I went straight into becoming a veterinary nurse when I left the school, left school, which I did for approximately three to four years before I left Australia. Do you have any sort of specialized training in veterinary medicine or nursing? Uh, only on the ground experience, like four years in a clinic. So um, you don't have any experience with um, medical training for humans, right? No. And um, you don't have any training in healthcare, correct? Could you be more specific? You don't have any training in healthcare for people, correct? I'm not a nurse. I'm not a human nurse. If that's your question, I don't really understand your question. Sorry, you don't have any training related to prescription drugs, do you? No. And um, you have no. Only, excuse me, only pertaining to animals. Yes, I would like to add that. Okay, and that, that was the training that you received on the job in Australia before you came to the U.S.? Amongst other things, yeah. Um, you, you're familiar with um, Ms. Heard um, taking prescriptions for Accutane and ProVigil, among other things, correct? Yes. Yeah. You are not, um, you never served as a nurse or a doctor to Ms. Heard, right? No. And you have... Uh, no medical knowledge um, to testify whether uh, Ms. Heard used ProVigil or Accutane in the way her doctors instructed, correct? No. And you're not an expert on the interaction of prescription drugs and alcohol or other drugs, correct? No. Did you, during the course of your employment, develop any personal knowledge of um, Mr. Depp's use of alcohol or drugs? Not first hand. And what do you mean by not first hand? 
Well, I worked with Amber. I didn't work with him. Did you ever see Mr. Depp um, using illegal drugs? No. Did you ever see Mr. Depp um, abuse alcohol? No. Did you ever speak with Dr. Kipper? No. Did you ever speak with Aaron Borum? Yes. And, and Aaron Borum was a nurse who worked for Dr. Kipper, right? She was assigned to Amber. That's I'm sorry. I'm him. sorry. She, she was assigned to Amber. That's how I came to be speaking to her. And she also provided medical services to Johnny, right? I, I don't know. No. What do you recall speaking to Aaron Borum about? Just random chit chat in the course of the day, nothing specific. Do you recall ever forming any concern in your own mind about any of Mr. Depp's behavior in his relationship with Amber? Never. Nothing you heard, nothing you witnessed, nothing you saw during your time with Ms. Erd ever gave you an inkling of concern about Mr. Depp's behavior toward Amber? Never. Now, you, um, you left your employment your, your employment with Amber ended in early 2015, correct? Yeah, just after they came back from the wedding on the island. Did Miss Heard terminate your employment? When Miss Heard came back from the island, she informed me that she now needed to support her mother because her mother could no longer work at a diagnosis, a medical diagnosis, and she told me she could no longer afford to pay me since she had to support her mother and therefore she would have to terminate my employment to support her family. And did you resent Ms. Heard for that, for terminating your employment? I would have been asked to have been given some notice, so I had some time to look around. Uh, so I was a little upset for the lack of notice. But apart from that, no, I was not upset. Ms. Heard gave you six weeks of severance pay, correct? I don't recall want to stay in the job for Ms. Heard? Well, I did ask if I could have a few months heads up so I could seek another job that would suit the terms of my employment, but she did not allow that. And that made you angry, correct? No. Did, did you ask to be put on Mr. Depp's payroll so that you could remain uh, being paid by Ms. Heard or Mr. Depp? Well, when she said she couldn't afford it, I said, now you're married, couldn't I go on to uh, Depp's payroll? And she said, no, it was part of a legal agreement they had that she was not allowed to do that. I don't know whether that was true or not. Did you ever ask Mr. Depp whether you could go on his payroll? No. Isn't it true that you asked to um, live in one of Mr. Depp's houses rent free for a period of time after your employment? Well, you see, I'm a homeowner, and but I want to be clear. I didn't want to miss a mortgage payment due to unemployment. So my idea was is perhaps I could find an alternate accommodation in order to rent out my house so I don't lose my entire property. I'm a homeowner. Keeping my home and my payments up to date is the paramount importance to me. Isn't it true that you had already skipped about a year and a half of mortgage payments on your home during the time you were employed by Ms. Hurd? No. Let's pull up the document ending in ALH 5858, please. Sounds exhibit 11 on the screen. Yeah, I think I can, I think you've read everything. Um, so if you're, if you're ready to, for me to ask you questions, my first question is just, is this an email exchange between you and Amber relating to the termination of your employment? Yeah, this is the email I received when she terminated me. And then the emails above it in this document are, some of which are duplicated, are an email exchange that you had with Amber um, after you received the termination email. Yeah, when I woke up that morning, yeah. Um, 
Hey, can you go to the first page, please? Top of the document. Mm -hmm. um, it, isn't it true that Ms. Heard did pay you six extra weeks of pay after your termination? She's stating that, but I don't recall if it actually happened or not. You don't have personal knowledge one way or the other or a recollection of whether she did? No. Um, and isn't it true that you, you do tell her in this email that you didn't pay your mortgage for the first year and a half that you were working for her? Yes, I had one of those balloon mortgages, so I had to go through a loan modification. And I recall now that that's why I was able to agree to work for her for such a small amount of money than what I normally made. It was sort of as a, a favor almost. What, what was a favor? To work for her for like half my usual paycheck, basically. So you're, you were doing Amber a favor? Yes, because initially it was described as a part-time, 20-hour-a-week thing with flexibility and blah, blah, blah. So, you know, I thought it's not really in my caliber, but my son was only four at the time, so it seemed like a good idea, especially because I wasn't paying my mortgage, so I could take the hit by getting ex less pay than I would normally make. And that way I could also have the time with my son that I wanted. Are you, and I, I think the answer to this is no, but I just want to be clear. You're not blaming... Amber, for you're not paying your mortgage, right? No, that was my choice. It was the only way I could get a loan modification. It was the way it worked back then. But you know the 2008 crash? That's how it worked back then. If you wanted to save property. Well, and you started working for Amber in 2012, right? Yes, it took a long time, the loan modification process. And, and you're not blaming Amber for getting a credit card with 29% interest, are you? What? You, you see in your email on that first page, um, about two thirds of the way down, you say, I have borrowed from my mom, my tenant security deposit, and now I have used up a credit card I should use as it has 29% interest. Oh, that's my choice. Did you have tenants in your property at that time? Um, I have a duplex. I'm just trying. And that time, yes, I had tenants in one house and I was living in the other. Did you use the tenant security deposit for personal expenses? I don't remember. Do you see where you say I have borrowed from my mom my tenant security deposit? Does, mm -hmm. do, do you recall using your tenant security deposit or, or borrowing from that? It's too long ago for me to recall if it actually happened. Would there be a reason that you would have said that if it wasn't true? No. And um, isn't it true that you did ask to live rent free um, in Johnny's houses after you were terminated, right? Lots of people did. And isn't it true that you did? Yes. And did that ever come to pass? No. Did it make you angry that that didn't happen? No. It's fair to say at the time that your employment was terminated, you were in fairly significant financial trouble, correct? Yes. And You were angry with Amber for terminating you at this time when you were in financial trouble, correct? No. You see at the bottom of your email on page two, you say, Max and I love you very much as a the sign off to your email. Yes. And Max is your son, right? Yes. That wasn't true. Correct. In fact, you, you, you didn't love Amber. You didn't like her, did you? Um, any close relationship has ebbs and flows in the energy that you feel towards one another. It's pretty standard. And at that point in time, you, um, well, since your termination, you've had nothing but animosity toward Miss Heard, correct? No, I actually bumped into her at the P.O. box about three months after, and she was in her Range Rover, and I 
saw her sister and she said, come say hi to Amber. And I went back there and I was going to say hi, but she was on the phone and she was saying, wait, wait. But then I had to go. That's the only time I've ever seen her. But I, w I wanted to go and say hi. I wasn't feeling like I wanted to avoid her or anything. You know, things, things happen and life goes on, you know. I understand you're a personal assistant, Ms. James. What type of people do you work for? Uh, High-profile celebrities. Are they celebrities in the entertainment industry? Yes. You previously testified that in March of 2012, you worked as a personal assistant for Ms. Heard. Yes? Yes. In total, how long did you work for Ms. Heard as her personal assistant? Uh, almost three years. And at the time you were hired in March of 2012, had you ever heard of Ms. Heard? No. You previously testified today that at some point while working for Ms. Heard, you transitioned from working part-time to full-time. Is that right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. When did that transition happen? I don't recall specifically. You think it happened within the first year of your employment? I believe it happened within the uh, around six months into the employment. So most definitely it happened in the first year of your employment. Is that correct? Yes. You really tes testified that you stopped working for Ms. Heard as her personal assistant in February of 2015. Is that right? Yes. And you also testified that Ms. Heard let you go upon her return from the Bahamas in February of 2015. Yes? Yes. Did Ms. Heard ever give you any indication or warning that your employment might end upon her marriage to Mr. Depp? No. How did it make you feel when Ms. Heard terminated your employment without warning? A bit of a shock, a bit of a feeling of being blindsided. When you first began working for Ms. Heard, and when Ms. Heard was in town, in other words, not traveling, how many times per week would you see her? Almost daily. And did that change when you became a full-time personal assistant for Ms. Heard? No. Would you see Ms. Heard on the weekends as well? Yes. And when you would see Ms. Heard in person, did you coordinate with her when you would be seeing her? No, I would arrive whenever it was necessary to bring stuff that I'd picked up on errands or whatnot. There was no given set schedule. And when you say you would arrive, where would you arrive to? Um, it depended where she was at the time. Sometimes she was at Orange. Sometimes she was at one of Johnny's houses on Sweetser. And then eventually they all moved down to the uh, lofts downtown. You previously testified that your work as Ms. Hurd's, as being Ms. Hurd's uh, private assistant um, was extensive. Would you please tell us everything that was you were responsible for? Everything from handling all of her um, dry cleaning, picking up packages, mail, liaising with agents, um, other people in the industry, uh, coordinating travel, making restaurant reservations, uh, you know, dealing with the staff, the vendors on the property, uh, that sort of thing. Did Ms. Hurd ever ask you to monitor press for her? Yes. What specifically did she ask you to do? I had a newsstand guy that was instructed to hold two copies of every magazine she appeared in. Uh, it was a newsstand on Sherbourne Avenue, just off La Cienega, and he would hold them for me and I would go there once a week to pick up the pile of magazines. I'm sorry, you, you, you got muffled out. You said that he would hold those for me and... He would hold them for me and I would go approximately once a week to pick up whatever magazines Amber was featured in, two copies of each, which I would then store in her garage. Why would you store them in Miss Heard's garage? Because she didn't want Mr. Depp to see them. Did she tell you why she didn't want Mr. Depp to see them? No, she just got very angry with me one day because I hadn't quite made de made it downstairs to put them in the garage when she came home and she went absolutely ballistic over that. When you say she went absolutely ballistic over that, can you please describe what you mean? 
screaming, yelling, abuse. Do you remember what she said to you? No. That it was abusive in your opinion? Blind rage. Over the three year period in which you worked for Ms. Heard, were you ever with Ms. Heard when she was getting dressed or undressing? All the time. How often were you present when Ms. Heard was getting dressed? Every time she was getting dressed for a fitting, I was, I would say 90% of the time I was there. And just to clarify, was it just when Ms. Heard was in fittings that you would see her in states of undress? No, it was, it was also in her apartment. She had no issue with walking around naked quite often. Did you ever observe Ms. Heard putting on makeup? Yes. How often did you see Miss Hurd doing her makeup? Just when she was getting ready to go out somewhere for a party or something. And when you interacted with Miss Hurd, and I understand it was quite frequent and regular, did it appear to you that she was wearing makeup? She usually never wore makeup unless she was going to a special event. And when she did go to special events, would you describe her makeup as heavy? It would depend on it would, more makeup artists would do it or if she would do it herself. If she did it herself, it would be light and usually adding lashes and that's about it. And I believe you previously testified to this, so I'm sorry for asking you again, but while you worked for Ms. Heard, did you ever see any types of injuries on her? No. Did you ever see any cuts? No. Did you see bruises? No. Did you see swelling? No. Redness in her face? No. How about Miss Heard having black eyes? Never. A broken nose? Never. Missing hair clumps? <laughs> Sorry, I didn't catch that. Miss James. Never. Did you ever see Miss Heard cry? Yes. How often did you see her cry? Hard to put a number on it. Sometimes she would cry on the phone. I think at least once or twice she might have cried on the phone. You know, and then as far as seeing her personally crying, you know, she was a pretty dramatic person. It's hard to really put a number on it. I'm focusing on when you saw her in person crying. How many times do you believe that you saw her in person crying? I would say twice, maybe twice. Let's take that in, in bite sizes. The first time you saw Miss Heard cry in person, do you recall what she was crying about? Go ahead, Miss James. In insecure emotions. So the, tw the two times that you recall Miss Heard crying in front of you, you remember her crying about being insecure. Is that yeah. correct? Yeah. You testified that she felt insecure about her relationship. Is that correct? Yes. Can you expand on that? What do you mean by that? He didn't like being away from his physical presence. Did she, Ms. Heard tell you that she felt insecure when Mr. Depp wouldn't be present with her? Yeah. Other than telling you she felt insecure about her relationship with Mr. Depp, what else did Ms. Heard say about feeling insecure? She told me she didn't like hanging out in his house with his friends because it, it was boring and they were all old men playing guitars and it wasn't interesting to her. Was Miss Heard dating Mr. Depp when you first started working for her? Yes. When did you first learn that Miss Heard was dating Mr. Depp? After uh, about a month, I think. How did you learn that she was dating Mr. Depp? She told me. What did she tell you? 
she she told me she was dating Johnny Depp. Do you recall the first time you met Mr. Depp? Yes. When was that? It was in her apartment on Orange, probably shortly after she told me she was dating him and was standing in the dining room. And approximately when was that? I don't remember. I would say um, April, or, April or May of 2020. What was your impression of Mr. Depp? He was very peaceful, very calm, almost shy and uh, very quiet. And uh, I remember he was wearing red, red suede shoes because I didn't know where else to look. I looked at his shoes. It's like, like a, <laughs> it's a weird recollection, I know, but I'm just being honest. Did you ever witness Mr. Depp be rude to anyone? He's such a gentleman. He's so he's like a total southern gentleman. So no, no. Did you ever see Mr. Depp lose his cool? No. Did you ever see him scream at anyone? No. Did you ever see him break something? Only in a video. In your presence, did you ever see Mr. Depp break something intentionally? Never break anything, never throw anything, always completely passive. I believe you've testified previously that you have a son, correct? Yes. How old was your son when you first started working for Ms. Heard? Four, four years old. And did you ever bring your son to work with you? Yes. How often? Uh, quite often, if I had to keep working, I would bring him back there after school. And if I had to work on the weekends, he would come with me then. Did Mr. Depp ever interact with your son? Yes, he was very kind. How often did you, did Mr. Depp interact with your son? Whenever they were in each other's presence. Can you give me an estimate of how often that happened? Oh, countless times. And he would he would even teach him how to play guitar. He brought him back from vacations. Uh, he showed him his amazing makeup makeover when he was uh, doing black mass. He tricked him. He leant over and was saying, "Do you know who I am?" And he had the full makeup on. Son's jaw almost hit the ground. It was really cute, actually. Yeah. <laughs> He gave my son a, a little um, pick as well, a guitar pick, which he cherishes to this day as well. Yeah. Fair to say you were around Mr. Depp and, and Ms. Heard together quite a, quite a lot. Yeah, it, be, it became increasingly more as the time went on, yeah. What was your impression of Ms. Heard and Mr. Depp's relationship? Uh, you know, it was it, it did not seem like a perfect relationship to me, based on a lot of insecurity on her behalf, um, which seemed to cause uh, confusion in the relationship. Um, uh, maybe the age gap was an issue because of their different interests. I know that much. Apart from that, who am I to know of the relationship? You know. Do you think that Mr. Depp was smothering of Ms. Heard? Oh, no. Yeah. Did, it, did it appear to you that Mr. Depp was jealous of Ms. Heard? No. Did you ever have interactions with Mr. Depp by yourself? Um, sometimes, yeah. And what were those interactions like? This friendly chit chat, which would stop immediately when Amber saw me speaking to him, she'd give me the evil eye and I'd know to just quickly walk away. Did Amber ever talk to you about your interactions with Mr. Depp? No.
In the three years that you worked for Ms. Hurd, did you ever see Ms. Hurd and Mr. Depp argue? No. In the three years that you worked for Ms. Hurd, did you ever see any physical violence between Ms. Hurd and Mr. Depp? Never. Did you ever see either of them being physically aggressive with one another? No. Did you ever see any property damage at Ms. Hurd's home? Never. Did you ever see any property damage at Mr. Depp's primary residence on Sweetser? Never. Did you ever see any property damage at the lofts or the penthouses at the Eastern Columbia building? No, no never. Over the three year period in which you worked for Ms. Hurd, did you ever hear from anyone that Mr. Depp or Ms. Hurd had been in a physical altercation? No. Over the three year period in which you worked for Ms. Hurd, did you ever see Ms. Hurd be physically aggressive with anyone? No. Let's break that down a bit. When you say she was verbally abusive to you regularly, can you explain to me how she was verbally abusive to you? Screaming, screaming over the phone. She screamed at me once in person, multiple times screaming at me over the phone. Barrages of abusive text messages, day and night, a lot of them in the middle of the night, I think you're aware. I think between 2 and 4 a.m. the barrage would start, what I'd wake up to. All incoherent, not really making sense, just basically someone to lash out at, you know, no apparent reason to it. You testified previously that you observed Ms. Hurd be verbally abusive to her sister. Yes. What do you recall about that? It was ongoing kick the dog kind of relationship with her sister. So it's really hard to pinpoint any specifics, but yeah, her poor sister was treated like the dog that you kick basically. You previously testified that Ms. Hurd, you observed Ms. Hurd be verbally abusive to her mother. What specifically did you observe? Well, there is a video line where you can see her being abusive first and foremost. So it's not even based on what I'm telling you. It's what I've seen, the interactions between the two of them when her mother was still alive and the fact that her mother was terrified of her. Did her mother tell you she was terrified of her? She personally told me she was terrified of her. Did you ever witness Ms. Hurd tongue lash her mother? Here and there, yes. Especially when it was a build up to a stressful event or something like that, yeah. You said you felt that Ms. Hurd was verbally abusive to you. Can you provide me with any specific examples of this behavior? Well, I thought I did earlier, but yeah, it was so random and ongoing. You would never know when it was going to come left of center. I do remember on one occasion when we were moving from part to full time and then the salary negotiations became a real bone of contention. And I specifically remember standing in her office where she leapt up out of her chair, put her face approximately four inches from my face. She was spitting in my face and telling me how dare I ask for the salary I was asking for, which was in fact approximately half of my regular annual salary. I was offering her that as a favor. And she felt that gave her the right to spit in my face. And there was a witness in the apartment at that time, by the way. Who was at the apartment at the time? The handyman, Hector Galindo. I'm sorry? The handyman, Hector Galindo. He was so mortified. He was so embarrassed to hear her speaking to me like that. 
Ms. James, while you worked for Ms. Hurd, did you ever observe her drinking alcohol? Yes, I did. How often did you observe Ms. Hurd drink alcohol? Don't recall. What alcohol did you observe Ms. Hurd drink in your presence? Red wine. Did Ms. Hurd ever appear intoxicated to you? Yes, she often did. While you worked for Ms. Hurd, were you aware of what, if any, prescription drugs she was taking? Yes, because I had to pick it up and I often had to deliver it to her to you set. Anticipated... I'm sorry, Ms. James, I interrupted your question, or your answer, excuse me. The last part of your answer was to... I would, I, it was my job to pick it up and deliver it to her also bring it to her if she was doing a photo shoot or if they, uh, you know on set or something if she'd forgotten it what prescription drugs do you remember picking up from Ms. Hurd? for vigil any other prescription drugs that you remember picking up from Ms. Hurd? accutane Any others? Not specifically. To your knowledge, did Ms. Hurd ever stop taking Provigil or Accutane while you were working for her? No. Did Ms. Hurd ever tell you that she had, was experiencing any side effects from Provigil? She didn't say it, but I observed it. We'll go back to that in a minute, but did Ms. Hurd ever tell you that she was experiencing any side effects from Accutane? No. You previously testified that you observed Ms. Hurd having certain side effects from Provisual. Yes? Yes. What side effects did you observe Ms. Hurd exhibiting? manic episodes. Can you tell me what you mean by manic episodes? Similar to if someone was on some sort of amphetamine drug, moving very fast, uh, not making a lot of sense, hyper-organizing, hyper-tasking, just very, very uh, hyper. Yeah. Besides prescribed medication, did you ever observe Ms. Hurd ingest any illicit drugs while you worked for her? No. Did Ms. Hurd ever tell you that she had ingested illegal drugs? Yes. When did Ms. Hurd tell you that she had ingested illegal drugs? Um, sporadically here and there. What drugs did Ms. Hurd tell you she had ingested? Mushrooms, ecstasy, and cocaine. If you remember, how many times did Ms. Hurd tell you that she had ingested illegal drugs? I can't remember. Based on your personal observations, did it ever appear to you that Ms. Hurd was under the influence of illegal drugs? Yes. How many times? Uh, I, I don't know. Less than five? It's so long ago, it's hard for me to remember.
why did you why did it appear to you that Ms. Hurd was under the influence of illegal drugs? Disoriented, partying with friends, um, lots of heavy drinking, laughing, dancing, playing, all the sorts of things that go hand in hand with uh, imbibing in drugs. Would Ms. Hurd's treatment of you change when she was intoxicated? Yes. How so? She became more and more belligerent and abusive. Ms. James, you previously testified that you provided testimony in the matter involving Mr. Depp in the United Kingdom. Do you remember that testimony? Mm hmm Yep. And how did you provide testimony in the United Kingdom? Uh, well, I wrote a witness statement and then I had to do a live video feed. And did you understand that your witness statement was made under oath? Yes. And did you understand that your testimony during the trial live was also under oath? Did anyone help you write your witness statement? Uh, Shillings over in the UK uh, helped me with the first draft and then I took over and com completely edited it to be my own words. That was after a phone conversation we had. They jotted down notes sent me some basic notes to work with, and then I worked on it from there. How long did it take you to write your witness statement? Um, about three or four days. Did you feel you had an adequate amount of time to prepare and write your witness statement? Yes, I was very proud with the outcome of how I wrote it because it was all my words and it was the absolute truth. And did you have enough time to review your witness statement for accuracy before you signed it? Yes. Was everything that was in your witness statement true and accurate to the best of your knowledge? Yes. And is that still true today? Yes. Lucien, may I please have you pull up exhibit, DEP exhibit number four, please? Find DEP exhibit number four on screen. James, do you remember receiving an email from Ms. Hurd on or about February 12th, 2015? I don't even believe I was still working for that date. Do you remember receiving this email in particular from this? February 12th, 2015. Again, I don't, as far as I know, I wasn't even working for her at that time, so I wouldn't even know why she wrote this letter to me, quite honestly. Do you remember receiving this email then? No. Okay. Can we please pull up exhibit number five? Hello. Find depth is a verified on screen. Lucy, may I ask you to? There you go. You read my mind. Lucy, may I either take control or have you scroll down to the bottom? Thank you. James, the way these emails tend to work is they, they start at the bottom. Yeah. And then go up. And this one is no exception. Right. So I'm going to, for your ease, I'm going to have you read the bottom email first, since it's the first one in the chain, dated February 3rd, 2015. Mm -hmm. 
looks like she was traveling straight to London after the wedding. That's what it's, that's what I'm reading. Do you remember? Actually, you know what? Why don't you read this entire email chain, and then I'm going to ask you some questions about it. Can you help me? Uh, if it's, oh, no, no, it's missing. I don't know. It's, it's being finicky. Uh, no, do, you, do you have control of this? I do have control. Sorry, Miss James. Okay. Yeah, I can go up a bit more now. Mm-hmm. Do you remember receiving these emails from Miss Heard? Not really, no. no. Do you see where Miss Heard on February 4th, 2015 writes in all caps, are there no direct flights? Question mark, question mark, exclamation. Mm -hmm. I'm just pointing her to the top email, Mr. Rottenborn. Do you see where Miss Heard writes to you are there no direct flights in all caps? Yeah. You would agree with me that nowhere else in this email chain, Ms. Heard uses all caps just to write to you, correct? No, it does not. She seems very confused. That's all I can say. When I'm reading through this, she just seems to be very confused. And the thing is, is um, like if that if that question were to be directed to anyone, it should have been to the travel agent, not me. I mean, I'm not the travel agent. The travel agent was down there in the beginning. Trudy Sullivan. Directing your attention, Miss James, to May of 2014, when you met. Ms. Heard at the Chateau Marmont in Los Angeles, California. Do you remember your testimony about that incident? You testified previously that she, that Ms. Heard asked you to bring a bathing suit to the hotel. Is that correct? Yes. Did you see Ms. Heard wearing a bathing suit in May of 2014 at the Chateau Marmont? Yes. Based on your recollection, did you see any bruises on Ms. Heard's body? No. Did you see any red marks on Ms. Heard's body? No. How would you describe the general atmosphere or mood of Ms. Heard and her friends at the Chateau Marmont? Uh, to be honest, it seemed a little conspiratorial to me. Yeah. How so? like a strategy meeting or something and combined with a pool party hard to describe it was very confusing I, originally i thought i was going over for some major emergency but then something else completely different was going on that day what made you think something completely different was going on that day well because originally it made it seem like she was having this major emergency and she was completely alone and she needed me very badly to come as quickly as possible but when i got there she was surrounded by people savannah io tillett wright and rocky specifically raquel pennington what was the second name you said i got rocky and who io tillett wright it's the letter i the letter o tillett wright Did you observe Ms. Heard showing what appeared to be injuries to any of her friends at the Chateau that day? 
No. Did it appear to you that Miss Hurd's friends were con comforting her? How would you describe Miss Hurd's friends' behavior? Friends hanging out together by the pool, having cocktails, and spending the entire afternoon hanging around together. Did you ever um, did you ever learn information that made you believe that one of the reasons that their relationship uh, between Johnny and Amber wasn't, as you described, perfect was because of Johnny's substance abuse? I couldn't speculate on the details of their personal relationship. You did testify earlier that one of the reasons you thought their relationship was, wasn't perfect was insecurity on Amber's part, though, right? Yes. So you, you developed an opinion that insecurity on Amber's part affected their relationship, but you did not develop an opinion that substance abuse or any actions by Johnny affected their relationship. Is that right? That statement was based on communications directed to me from Amber, basically. What communications specifically? Expressing, uh, you know, exactly what I just stated, that she was sad, she didn't want to be away from him, blah, 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 that sort of thing. That would happen all the time. And um, you believe that those statements were the reason that their relationship wasn't perfect? It's not for me to speculate. You would agree that because someone is insecure in a relationship does not mean that she deserves to be abused, correct? I have no answer for you for that. You would agree that even if someone acts quote unquote smothering in a relationship doesn't mean she deserves to be abused, correct? I don't have an answer for you for that. I don't have any further questions. Thank you for your time today. All right, thank you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's go ahead and take our morning recess for 15 minutes. No outside research, do not talk about the case, right? Okay, thank you. Let's go ahead and take a break until noon. Um, is your next witness? Um, are you, we're going to set it up so it's all ready to go uh, in the next. Okay. I really appreciate that. Okay. Thank you. We'll be in recess till noon.
Laurel Avis Anderson. And what is your business address? It's been a while. 10921 Wilshire Boulevard, Westwood Medical Plaza, Suite 1101, Los Angeles, 90024. And you're a clinical psychologist, is that correct? Correct. And you practice in Los Angeles? Yes. For how long have you been practicing? Almost 40 years. <clears throat> have you been practicing in uh, Los Angeles for that entire time? Yes. And you provide counseling for couples? Psychotherapy for individuals and couples. And what is psychotherapy? Just a, a brief layman's description. Um, it's an evaluation of an individual or a couple's um, problems. And then it's a conceptualization of what's actually going on and an effort to make intervention that leads to change. Do you recognize what this document is? Yes. But what is it? Uh, this is my ledger for tracking sessions that I use for invoice billing. And did this ledger come out of your files? Yes. And do you keep this document in the ordinary course of business? Absolutely. And I just want to, um, and this particular ledger, who is it for? It's, well, despite the names that are camouflaged, um, it's for Ms. Hurd and Mr. Depp. At the top, um, wh what are the two names that, that it says there? Ann Henry and Joey Davis. And, and, and Ann Henry is Amber Heard. Yes. And, and Joey Davis is Johnny Depp. Yes. And then it, and then uh, it says age 29 and 52, is that right? Yes. And 29 was the age of Amber Heard at the time? Yes. And 52 was the age of Johnny Depp? Yes. So, so as I understand it, on October 1st, uh, 2015, Mr. Depp and Amber Heard came in for couples counseling at uh, for three and a half hours? Yeah. Yes. Whether they were in for the full three and a half or not, I don't know. But that was the amount of, that was when this, the session started and they came in when they came in and <laughs> not together. Um, and it took three and a half hours to actually do that first session. Uh, so as I understand it, for that first session, Mr. Depp and Amber Heard did not come in together? I don't believe that they did. The next session with Amber, with Ms. Heard alone for background intake, and that was a two and one third hour session. And, and that session was on October 6, 2015? Yes. And what's the next uh, row? Indicated? The next day. You saw Amber on October 6, 2015 for two and a third hours, correct? Yes. And what is the next uh, row indicating? The next day, October 7th, Mr. Depp for three and a half. Again, it may not have been face to face for the full three and a half, but it was being at the beginning of the session, waiting for him, his coming in with the entourage and our getting to work. And for the, th the three sessions we just discussed, the, the October 1st session, the October 6th session, and the October 7th session, those were all in person with you, correct? So yes, the first three sessions were all in person. And then what does it say under, uh, for the next row, for the 1014 row? Couple, three hours. So on October 14th, 2015, Amber Heard and Mr. Depp saw you for a couple session? Yes. There's a there's a couple session on October 14th for three hours, is that right? 10-14, there's a couple session. On 10-21, there's a couple session where someone walked out for two hours. On 10-24, Ms. Heard was there, did a phone session for one and a half. And, and how did, and on the 1024 row, next to the two hours, it says W out, correct? It's 1021. In the, in the 1021 row, what does it say in the fourth column? 
walk for me that's walk out and you recall who walked out of that meeting i have tried to and i don't because each threatened and stood up <laughs> and i'm not positive who finally did the walkout and then what does it say what is it indicating on the row for 11 12 2015 couple session showed one and a half hours and then on 12 17 what does that show amber alone showed two and a quarter hours based on this ledger you saw amber and mr depp for four couple sessions that's right dr anderson i'm showing you it's been marcus anderson three Three ninety seven, no objection. Is that correct? You have uh, no objections. They didn't list objections in their exhibit list, and then we actually communicated this morning and they said they weren't objecting. All right. Do you know who on the team you you, you talked with? I'm sorry. No, that's a, just who, who, who? I believe it was Jessica Myers. Okay. All right. So no objection. All right. That's okay. 397 in evidence then. A defense 397. Um, and I will let you, which is CC000172, I'll let you take a look at it. So it's a one page email. So let me know when you're finished. Do you recognize this email chain? Yes. Do you know who Christian Carino is? Yes. Again. On the page where it says laurel.anderson28 at gmail.com, that's your email address? Yes. The email of March 28th, 2015, from Mr. Carino, he wrote, uh, Laurel, my closest friend, Amber, on copy wants to come see you alone first and then with her husband Johnny we'll leave it to you two to arrange a time love you both you, you see that email did you receive that email from March 18th 2015 I did and you responded to Mr. Carino's email correct as you can see yes yeah. what was your understanding as to why Amber Heard wanted to meet with you mm -hmm. I took it at face value that Ms. Heard wanted to have a consultation. And if this is not infrequent, that I might get an email like this. So, and when I hear that someone may then later want to come in with their husband or spouse, yes, I think it has to do with relationship issue. Um, on September 9th, 2015, you received an email from Mr. Carino. Is that right? Y yes, apparently. He was trying to set it up. And Mr. Carino was trying to set up a meeting uh, with you and Amber and Mr. Depp, is that right? Yes, that's what I assumed. And, and you responded to Mr. Carino's email, um, correct? I did. And then at the top, you received an email from Amber Heard? Yes. And she wrote, hi, Laurel, thank you so much for responding. I really appreciate it. I have to speak to my husband when he's done working today and make sure he's good with that time. I think it sounds perfect. Thank you so much again. I'm, I'm really looking forward to, to meeting you. Did I read that correctly? Yes. And, and you received that email from Amber Heard? I did. Um, on September 27th, 2015, you received an email from Amber Heard, correct? Yes. And Amber wrote, hi, Laurel, Johnny and I are back in town and would love to know if you have any availability to see us this week. Please let me know, thanks. You received that email from Amber Heard? Yes. And you responded that you were available on Thursday at 5.30 p.m., correct? Yes. And, and um, looking at the top of the email where it says Wednesday, September 30th, um, would you agree that the next day is, uh, Thursday, October 1st, 2015. Yes. Okay. And we need to, we can go back to your billing ledger, but the first time you saw Amber Heard and Mr. Depp was on October 1st, 2015. Is that right? 
Yes. But did you see Amber Heard on December 17th, 2015? Yes, we, we had established that, yes. All right, so it's seven on screen. Dr. Anderson, I'm showing you it's been marked as Anderson Exhibit 7, which is depth 3202. Uh, take a chance, read it, and let me know when you're finished. Yes. Um, attachment seven is a, at the bottom is a, you see a March 8th, 2016 email from Christian Carino to you, correct? Yes. And Christian Carino was asking if you'd be willing to make a house call to Johnny Depp's apartment downtown. Is that right? I did not know where he lived. But his email says, would you be willing to make a house call to Johnny's apartment downtown, correct? Did it say downtown? Yes, it did. Okay. And then you responded on March 8th, 2016, correct? Yes. And you wrote, hey, Christian, have, of course, avoided this my whole career unless someone was in rehab, would be willing to try it once, and that there's something I'd like Johnny to understand, and I don't think he does. Um, where you wrote, I'd like Johnny to understand um that I'd, where you wrote would it would would be willing to try it once in that there's something i'd like johnny to understand that i don't think he does what did you mean by that i can't say exactly what it was i wanted to in part but i i know that i thought that he was <laughs> um having difficulty in the sessions and I think it was something about the process between the two of them that I was trying to clue him into. What difficulty was Mr. Depp having in the sessions? <clears throat> having a voice. What do you mean by that? Ms. Hurd had a Jack Hammer style of talking. She was very amped up. He had trouble talking at a similar pace their dialogue he was cut off a lot so I, I, I I'm guessing this is what I was I'm not sure what I it is but there was something anyhow this is how he didn't have a voice he couldn't keep up with her rapid fire um, way of conversation and so he was really overwhelmed In, in working with um, Amber and Mr. Depp, did Amber ever report to you any physical violence on behalf of Mr. Depp toward Amber? Yes. What type of physical violence did she report to you? Do you recall seeing photos from Amber Heard? I, I, I have, but I don't remember when I saw them. What do you recall about the photos? Her face was bruised. Do you recall wh where on her face you saw, on Amber's face you saw bruises? I think they were around her eyes, but I couldn't be positive. Did, did you witness abuse by either? I didn't person? witness, I didn't witness. Had you worked with Mr. Depp before working with Amber and Mr. Depp? No. Is it your testimony that while Mr. Depp may have said he wasn't violent with any of his other partners, there was violence between, from Mr. Depp toward Amber, correct? Yes, you're right. <clears throat> he had, he had, had been well controlled, I think for almost, I don't know, 20, 30 years. And uh, both were victims of abuse in their homes, but I thought he had been well controlled for decades. 
And then with Ms. Ms. Hurd, he was triggered and um, they engaged in what I saw as mutual abuse. Sometimes I'm not, I know she led on more than one occasion and started it to keep him with her because abandonment and having him leave was her worst nightmare. And I think he may have initiated it on occasions too on that I'm less sure on. And how did you come to the understanding that on some occasions, Ms. Hurd physically abused Mr. Depp? Ms. Hurd reported that. What did Ms. Hurd report to you? That it was a point of pride, two things. It was a point of pride to her if she felt disrespected to initiate a fight and was her father had beaten her. She was not going to. And the second, uh, The second one is what she reported to me, which is if he was going to leave her to de-escalate from the fight, she would strike him to keep him there. She would rather be in a fight than have him leave. Did you speak to any other doctors or psychologists that worked with either Amber or Mr. Depp? No. Did you review any uh, medical documents of Mr. Depp or Amber? I reviewed a... <clears throat> pharmacokinetic um, that that Ms. Hurd showed me, which has to do with um, neurotransmitter function, genetics, and medications. Just to go back, uh, doctor, what professional degrees do you hold? I have a, I have a couple of masters, a PhD, and a, a certified clinical nutrition certification. Would you mind please just um elaborating on that for the record yes i have a master's from young in my early in my life uh, in uh, teaching and curriculum i have a master's in psych i have a phd in clinical psychology i have a ccn which is a certified clinical nutrition um, uh, certification and do you recall doctor uh, in what year you obtained your phd Yes, I got it in 82. And if very briefly, if you could just please in summary fashion, just describe your employment history from 1982 forward after earning your PhD. Um, I collected clinical hours um, in hospitals and in psychiatric medical groups. I was employed to do some nutrition evaluation and intervention as well, but there were MDs behind me. We worked in concert, um, then worked in a hospital with, I think, I think that doctor was, re, uh, was um, workers comp. Um, and then when I was, you know, I have it out of order then I was on my own, but I was employed by that. This is when I was employed by a psychiatric medical group um, to do kind of a combination of psychotherapy and some nutrition. And then since then, I have been so, a solo practitioner out of network, word of mouth only, very small footprint <laughs> um, purposely um, all of these years. When did you become a solo practitioner? Um, very soon, probably uh, in probably in eighty six. So, is it fair to say that as of two thousand fifteen, you were you were already quite established as a solo practitioner? Yes. Generally speaking, what type of services did you provide your patients in two thousand fifteen? Adults only, individual or couples work and um, with a limited number of people there would have been neurotransmitter testing and uh, some attention to lifestyle and how <laughs> uh, nutritional elements affect the brain and if you would just please describe for us lay people what a clinical psychologist does um, 
the first thing is evaluation, intake, gather material. The second thing in the way I work is kind of, uh, during the intake process, could be one session, could be four sessions, depends on if it's an individual or a couple. I'm conceptualizing, I'm looking for the process. The content is something I make notes on, I care about, it leads me from session to session, but I'm really looking at process. What's going on between two people or what's actually going on inside of someone. The third step is I'm, I show my hand, I talk about it. I try to get either three people in the room all on the same page with me or one other person, this is what I see. And then the onus is on me to not just be a good friend and hold someone's hand and talk about mom, <laughs> but to actually make change. And so I lay out, here are the things I think we need to work on. Um, and then there are action steps for all of them so that someone has a more directed sense of what they're doing in psychotherapy as opposed to just coming in and talking about how they feel. Is it your practice when you have a session with a couple that you take notes from the session? I absolutely take notes from any session. Do you take, at what time in relation to this session do you take the notes? Um, I'm taking them during the session and they know it. Because so I don't want hours and hours and hours of homework at the end of a clinical day. So the notes are often, uh, you know, a lot of typos, wrong pronouns here and there, but essentially I'm just trying to gather facts as I go. Is it fair to say that you take the notes in a somewhat contemporaneous fashion? <laughs> sure. And do you take those notes in the ordinary course of your practice in your business? Absolutely. Do you maintain or do you keep those notes as part of your uh, treatment and regular course, ordinary course of business? I do. Thank you. And what type of information generally do you keep in your notes other than what you've already testified about? Whatever I want to. A anything that, from, it could be content that I'm tracking just so I know in the next session what kind of content we were talking about, um, and it could be processed too. Stand by, and I'll mark that as ex uh, plans exhibit number one. Showing exhibit one on the screen. Just to confirm, have you seen this do uh, document before, Dr. Anderson? Yes. And, and what is it? It's uh, Christian Carino doing the first contact, and the second one is from Ms. Hurd. Uh, wanting to know how to get in touch with me. But accepting uh, what's been thrust upon us, when was your first uh, couples therapy involving Ms. Hurd? October 1st, 2015. Was that an in-person session? Yes. Where was the session held? In my office. And, and Mr. Depp was also there, correct? Yes. How long was that first session? Uh, Three and a half hours. Was that the first time that you had ever met Ms. Hurd in person? I think so. And was that the first time you had ever met Mr. Depp in person? Yes. Okay, now if, if you could please turn, and this is a multi-page exhibit uh, Mr. Nadelhaft did not show you. Uh, this is going to be plaintiff's exhibit two. Stand by. Can I interrupt a second, Ben? Sure. Um, Adam, can you turn up your microphone? Because everyone's a lot louder than you, and when you object, I struggle to hear you. Can you hear me? Well, <laughs> I know, Michelle I know. is a lot louder than you, so if you talk at the same time, I can't okay. hear you. All right, I'll see what I can do. Yeah, I'll see what I can do. Thank you. And Dr. Anderson, if you could just take as long as you uh, would like to familiarize yourself with this document, I'll just state for the record, these are documents that you produced uh, that have a Bates designation one through 17. Yes, They're, I'm familiar. Um, what are these? Oh, well, strike that. Have you ever seen plaintiff's exhibit two before? 
Yes. What What is it? It's a redacted copy of my personal notes that I provided to you guys. And are these, um, I think you testified in response to Mr. Nadelhaft's questioning that the names Ann Henry and Joey Davis are pseudonyms? Yes. And uh, would you please just identify for us who Ann Henry is in real life? Ann Henry is Amber Heard. Joey Davis is Johnny Depp. And are these uh, your notes that you took contemporaneously of the four couples th uh, of, strike that, are these your contemporaneous notes that you took of the couples therapy sessions? Yes. Would these notes include any session that you had for Ms. Heard that was not part of the couples therapy? No. Did you have any sessions with Mr. Depp individually that weren't part of the couples therapy? No, during this period of time, it's color coded. Black is couples, red is Ms. Heard, and blue is Mr. Depp. Uh, whether I talked to them or saw them individually or as a couple, it was all in service of couples therapy. Understood. And so these notes in plaintiff's exhibit to encompass all of the couples therapies sessions that you had with Mr. Depp and Ms. Heard, either when they appeared together or when they appeared separately in the context of your couples therapy. Is that correct? I'm looking at one page. If you're talking about the entire redacted document, yes. And I've asked you the question generally, but I want to ask you in the context of, of these 17 pages. Did you prepare these 17 pages of couples therapy notes in the ordinary course of your treatment of Mr. Depp and Ms. Heard? Yes. Did you maintain or keep them in the ordinary course of your practice or business? I did. So my question was, uh, what is the significance of October 1, 2015? Um, I'm going to look at what I'm reading so that this makes sense to you. This can't possibly make sense, but it makes sense to me. Okay. They reported what they said to one another. So the first line is Ms. Heard talking, saying that Mr. Depp says to her, no one likes you, you're getting fame from me, I'm falling out of love with you, you're a whore. She's reporting just in the first session just how bad the relationship is, just how mean they are to one another. Uh, and at that point, I, because I'm typing quickly as they go along, I'm switching into a different voice, more about the process between them, where she has, I believe, interrupted him. He says no more about what she says about him. And it's just that they're fighting and she has a hard time. She, she bites the bait. She can't let him talk is, is my recollection. And from this, th that's kind of what that is. So it gives me a sense of what they're doing at home. They're each reporting. This is what we say to each other. Okay. I appreciate that, Dr. Anderson. I'm just going to try to break it down into to little bits. Um, so October 1, 2015 is the date of the first couple session, correct? Yes. And two and a half means two and a half hours long from start to finish? I am guessing they were in, they were present for two and a half hours, but that I waited whatever the first doc, the ledger says, but I waited an hour for them to show up. And Dr. Anderson, uh, in that first bullet point that we can see, uh, you write, Jay says, no one likes you, getting fame from me, falling out of love with you, whore. Jay is Johnny Depp? Yes, but that was said by Ms. Heard. So is it fair to say that Ms. Heard was saying that Johnny said to her, no one likes you, you're getting fame from me, I'm falling out of love with you, whore. That, that, would, that would have come from Mr. Depp, is that correct? Ms. Heard reported that that's what Mr. Depp said to her at their worst. Yeah. Did Amber, when he, when Mr. Depp told you that Amber had hit him in the jaw 
did Amber respond in any way? Did she deny it? Did she admit it? Uh, I don't think she denied it, but what I believe from my notes was that they galloped, she galloped off in a new direction and they um, continued to talk and there was no more that Johnny Depp was going to say about what he was reporting. It was more that they started into a fight. And I wrote that their process is a back and forth firing at each other. At that point, he had some energy. Um, and they don't communicate. They have terrible skills. At any point during the first session, did Ms. Hurd interrupt Mr. Depp when he was trying to talk? Yes. She talked over him. She had rapid fire talking. Did she interrupt him during your other sessions that are reflected in Plaintiff's Exhibit 2? Yes, and I pointed out the process to her at some point, and she got it, that she that no one could actually have a decent dialogue with her if she was rapid firing and talking over and just barraging. It was a process issue. You write doesn't answer directly when he asks her a question to what were you referring there don't have a clue if i could direct your attention further down the page from plan you see the notation to october 6 2015 yes was that the second couple's session no it's red it's amber alone so is it fair to say that you met alone with with amber for two and a third hours in the context of the couple's therapy is that correct Yes, this was to get her background material. So tell us what you mean uh, in that one section. He hits her, no closed fist. She hits back and now starts it for pride because... Father. Hit her. Would you please tell us um, what you meant by that? This is her reporting to me. Uh, it's the only thing in this... Uh, the clinical session that apparently was about physical abuse or else it would uh, not have been redacted out. Um, it's so when she said in terms of physical abuse that he hits her, a no closed fist means an open hand slap to me. And she says that she hits back and now she starts it and sometimes hits him first because her history is having been violated by her father physically and just out of pride, she uh if she's a lot of things trigger her uh, and if she's triggered she would hit him first and the he you're referring to is johnny depp correct yes when you said that she sometimes hits johnny first because of pride what did you mean she was sensitive to feeling disrespected um and a number of other things but and so, and if she felt disrespected, she had come out of her background history um, feeling that her pride needed to be, needed to dominate and she needed to stand up for herself. When Ms. Hurd told you that Johnny Depp hits her or slaps her, Johnny Depp was not present, correct? Correct. Okay. And, and it wasn't plural. It was, she referred to, well, I wrote he hits her. Yes, so maybe it was plural. But he was not present when she made that assertion. He was not. Did Ms. Hurd tell you that she socked Mr. Depp? Yes. <clears throat> um, she was describing kind of the progression of the physical violence. Did you have any understanding of what she meant when she admitted that she socks Mr. Depp? Yes, because there were three lines above this that explained the progression a bit. And I've already said what it was. Um, she felt she had to hit him back if he hit her. Um, and so she always did. And And again, that entry is from a session where Mr. Depp was not physically present, correct? 
That's right. Okay, let's move to the next session, uh, October 7, 2015. And this is a three and a half hour session, is that correct? Yes. Was that an in-person session? Yes. Did both Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd attend? No, this is blue. This is John, Mr. Depp's intake. Under, understood. And let's move now um, to the toward the bottom of the page. And I think I'm finally getting the code right. Um, so the next session occurred on October 14th, 2015. And it was the two of them for three hours. Is that correct? Yes. And that was another in-person session, true? Y yes. Um, and am, am I right to say that every single piece of your notes as to the October 14th, 2015 session has been redacted? Is that true? Yes, but I, to clarify something earlier on the ledger. Yes. I wrote two hours couple then Amber. It means he is the one who walked out of that session. My question was, um, am I correct that all of your notes for the October 14th, 2015 couple session for three hours are completely redacted. Is that true? Yes. So, um, so the next session occurred on October 21, 2015. True. True. And it lasted two hours. It started as a couple, then Mr. Depp left, and then you spoke only with Amber, but in the context of couples therapy, is that right? Yes. Okay, and let's go to the next session on uh, page 10. The next session was on October 24th, 2015. And I can't see from the code, was that uh, a, a couple's therapy or was it just one or the other of them attending? I don't know. This is a red phone session with Ms. Hurd. Okay, great. Um, and it lasted one and a half hours? Yes. So the next session was after that was on October 29th, 2015. Is that right? Yes. And uh, that just... That, that, that one? No, that one was uh, canceled. Oh, it was canceled. That's why it's so short. Okay. And then the one after that, still on page 10, was on November 12th, 2015. There's a, an appointment on 11-4 that was canceled that I didn't put an entry on. Okay. That's well, thank you. No, that's helpful. Uh, what about uh, November 12th? Was yes. that a joint session? Yes, it was. And was that in person? Yes. Okay. And then the next session on page 11 is uh, that even I can understand. Uh, so there was a no show on December 4th, 2015. Is that right? Yes. I, I'd like to clarify the no shows. In the oh, system. please, please do. Um, I think they both told me, but I think Mr. Depp told me at one point, but I already knew because this happens with couples. When a couple is having a lot of trouble in sessions, but they're doing well at home and they're in a little bit of a honeymoon, you know, period, they cancel instead of coming in because they know coming in will get them into conflict. Okay. And, and fair to say that that happened again on December, uh, 10th 2015 I can't tell which sessions they were sick or which which tesh, which sessions they were canceling because of this dynamic but it was admitted and explained to me and I understood it fully okay um, and still on page 11 the next session was on December 15th 2015 and it was a telephonic session is that right with Yes, with uh, Ms. Hurd. That was with Ms. Hurd, okay. You write, then last night, Monday, she slapped him as he sat there talking incoherently. Who slapped who? I actually, I actually know what happened. What happened? This was, as I said, Ms. Hurd talking on the phone to me. Mr. Depp's mother was in ICU. He had been doing a lot of, he was fucked up, as she would say, on a lot of drugs. And 
she slapped him because he was being incoherent and talking about another being with another woman did she did she tell you that he had hit her first or was she the one who initiated the slap she initiated that one because i think she felt demeaned and threatened and this is what she reported to you correct yes he was not present he was not on the call when she made these allegations uh was 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 he no and you didn't see any of this did you no and you didn't see her in person no. after okay um then uh there is a uh, notation uh, should she call police question mark where is that that's um right below what we were just talking about there in red it says should she call police what does that refer to so what did you mean um that was her asking me did you respond to her i believe i did then you write doesn't want to divorce wants to want to divorce yes what did you mean by that she loved him um he loved her um she believed that she wasn't stupid she knew that what they were doing wasn't healthy and so she wanted to want to divorce him but she didn't and yet it had escalated to this point so she was trying to figure out what to do and she had an entourage around her telling her what to do who was her entourage uh she had a routine group of friends that stayed with her lived in her home um probably as well as uh paid people that i don't know do you recall the names of any of her entourage one was rocky directing your attention to the last snippet from that session will she have advantage if she leaves him but files with police for abuse first was that a question that she asked you yes this was her talking out loud trying to strategize for herself so i'm playing exhibit 3 on screen and uh, dr anderson i think this is the same document that mr natal half showed you as anderson exhibit 6 so i'm not going to ask you to identify it again but i do have a couple of um questions about it that Mr. Nadelhoff did not ask. I believe you testified and correct me if I'm wrong that you have never spoken to any of Ms. Hurd's other psychologists or therapists. Is that true? That's true. And putting that aside, uh when she refers to her own therapist in this exhibit 3, do you know the name of that person putting aside whether you had ever spoken to him or her? I do not. Okay. Did Miss Hurd ever explain to you why the nuances and com complexity of her relationship with Mr. Depp would be lost on her own therapist? I believe that she felt known in a more thorough way in terms of her re her behavior inside of the relationship. And let's pick up where we left off on the bottom of page 11. of plaintiff's exhibit 2. Okay. And specifically the entry that begins on January 13, it's at the very bottom of page 11, the literally the last line. Oh, that's it. On this on January 13, 2016, was this a uh joint session with Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd or was this just with one of them? It was only Ms. Hurd. And let me go back and see if it it was phone. No, 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 I'm sorry. It was in person. No. It was, was, no, 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 never mind. 11316 was Ms. Hurd in person. And do you know how long this in-person session was was Ms. Hurd on January 13, 2016? I think it was probably just 1 hour. Okay. 
You write, didn't fight on island till last day. On island started to get into something. Uh, what did you ref what were you referring to there? Well, Christmas had occurred and the goal was they had a lot of people go into his island and they were going to be together. And the goal was to try and get through the Christmas holiday without fighting. And so she was reporting on that. Okay. Then she's, uh, you write, he got aggressive, threatening, didn't touch him, hidden bathroom. What were you referring to there? What she reported to me. Um, which was an improvement that she didn't participate. So she, is it fair to say that she told you she did not hit him at that time? Yes, that's what I believe my notes say, yes. Then you write, she threw can at him since home fighting, then she better. Who is the she who threw a can at him? Miss Heard. And the him whom she threw a can at was Mr. Depp, correct? Yes. Did you receive that email on or about March 8th in the morning at 6.23 a.m.? Well, apparently because I responded in the morning. Okay, well then let's, we'll skip it. We'll go right back to your response. Um, so the response at the top of the page, uh, the second entry, I suppose, did you write that email to Mr. Carino on March 8th, 2016 at 7.27 a.m.? I did. Uh, and fair to say that you weren't enthusiastic about the idea of, of making a house call? I was not. And Mr. Nadel Haft asked you about what it was you wanted Johnny to understand about the process. And I, I was wrong because I can see now the date of it, looking at it more carefully. This is after the relationship has devolved considerably. So what I, I think was guessing was earlier in the um, relationship. I don't know what it was I wanted him to understand. Let's go back to exhibit two then, please. And we're not going to repeat. We're just picking up where we left off. And now we've gotten up to page 13 of the 17 page of your notes. So if we can start out, oh, exactly. Um, do you see where the notes of your session on June 18th, 2016 began? Yes. And was this a solo session, couples session between you and Mr. Depp only? This is with Mr. Depp, it's blue. It's just the two of us. Gotcha. And it lasted one and a third hours. Yeah. You write fight on her April 22nd birthday. He late, huge fight. His mother died on the 20th. I think I know what you're referring to, but if you could please describe that for the record. One second. This is when I got the Scaramanga Productions on my phone. So he found me at home, which was new. Um, domestic violence charges had already been made. His mother had just died on the 20th. Well, when he told you that there was a fight on April 22, birth, 22 birthday, was that Ms. Hurd's 30th birthday? I think it was. And is he telling you uh, that he arrived late for the birthday uh, dinner party and there was a huge fight? Yes. Do you know who Tasha Von Rhee is? Yeah, well, I know her name. I know she was someone that Ms. Hurd was in a relationship with. Then you write, was chaotic violence, but gave as good as she got. What does that mean? I believe I'm quoting, I'm, I think I'm quoting what, some of this is just my typing of the words he's using while he's talking. Very, ver he's also very verbal when no one's interrupting him. Um, 
And I think he talked about how chaotic it was, how violent it was, and she gave as good as she got. That's kind of a direct quote. Those are not my, that's not my language. Directing your attention further down the page to the entry for July 13th, 2016, three hours Amber in person. Was that an in-person meeting you had uh, a couples theory, therapy with only Ms. Heard? No, this is not couples therapy. This is Ms. Ms. Heard by herself. I wrote in person. Oh, okay. Um, so just to be clear, what follows in your, these are your notes for your individual treatment of Ms. Heard having nothing to do with couples therapy? Not true. In my mind, uh, the dust had not settled on the couple yet. And this was just kind of aftermath of the, the uh, kind of falling apart of the marriage. But okay. I, I didn't mean to mischaracterize anything. I was just trying to suss out what it was. No, um, this is not individual therapy for her. This is about the marriage. If we could please go to exhibit six, Lucian, which is a new document. When I say new, um, it was produced uh, by Dr. Anderson's office, but new in the sense that Mr. Nadelhoff didn't ask her about it. Uh, Dr. Anderson, have you ever seen this document before? Of course, I created it. <laughs> okay, um, and what is it? It's a treatment summary. When I was first uh, subpoenaed, or my notes were required years ago, my notes are jumbly. They don't say a lot. <laughs> they're they're confusing. They're, you know, as you've seen, or you haven't seen, actually. So um, I did what psychologists do. You take, you go through all of those notes and you, and your brain, because it's not as if you're not left with a very, you know, I hope a very clear sense of what went on. So I took everything I thought and believed conceptually about them. I went through all of my notes and I wrote this treatment summary. And then if you could go up. Paragraph is still there. Yeah, and I wanna ask you about that one paragraph. I think you've described this in the course of your testimony, but I did want to ask you about your sentence. She reported oh, always hitting him back as a point of pride, but admitted that she eventually initiated the hitting herself. Is the she re you're referring to, Ms. Heard? It is. And is the him you're referring to, Johnny Depp? It is. Okay, let's move to the next page, please. And, and I just want to focus on the one a snippet on page, page three. You write, she reported trying to initiate a fight with him one night by slapping him when she was offended by what he said. Is the she you're referring to there, Ms. Heard? Yes, it is. And is the he you're referring to Johnny Depp? Yes, it is. Then in the last sentence, it was also at this time that she showed me photos of her injuries. When did Ms. Hurd show you photos of her alleged injuries? Well, to the best of my pulling together the information I wrote down, uh, I'm, I'm saying it was right after that fight. And she, my recollection is she came in, she talked to me by phone and then came in the next day. Um, Or at least I thought I thought that. 
somewhere around the time she got the injury. I know she came in in person to show me. Did she show you photos or did she show you? Both. Oh. Both. You said she showed you photos. And so is it your testimony that she showed you photos of her injuries shortly after the alleged event? Somewhere in the period while she still had injuries, she showed me photos, but she also came in and showed me in person. And what did she show you in person? Bruising on her face. Um, other than the bruising on her face, what else, what other injuries did she show you? I don't remember. There may have been more, but I don't remember. And you weren't present during the alleged uh, physical injuries, correct? Correct. So the only basis you had uh, with respect to the cause of the injuries was what Ms. Hurd told you, correct? Yes. And you write, the physical violence that occurred between them appeared to me to be mutual. You never actually witnessed any physical violence by Mr. Depp or by Ms. Hurd, correct? Never. And you said that they were each victims of domestic violence, both in their family. Uh, they were each victims of domestic violence in their families. What did you mean by that? They were each beaten by parents. Um, go back very briefly to exhibit two. Page 11. And um, after the part where this, this refers to a session that was just uh, you and Ms. Hurd, correct? Yes. And this call, which was just between you and Ms. Ms. Hurd and not Mr. Depp involved, that occurred on or about December 15th, 2015? Yes. And was it just shortly after that call uh, when Ms. Hurd showed you pictures and actually came into your office, is that right? She came in on 12-17, so yes. So, so Ms. Hurd came in on December 17th and you saw bruises on her face, is that correct? I believe that's when. Was that bruising that you observed similar to the bruising that appeared on the photographs that she showed you? Yes. You testified that what you saw in person was similar to what you saw in the photographs Amber gave you, correct? Yes. When she came into your office on December 17th, what did her face look like? What I recall is not purple, green, and blue, but just a darkening, so kind of a dark, a darker gray-blue sort of thing. But I, I I don't have a photo of it. I don't remember that well. Is that, Dr. Anderson, consistent with your understanding that there were no other entries on December 15 uh, or December 17th relating to physical abuse? You know, um, there was nothing about physical abuse, nothing in that next session. It was all about Christmas and, get, and her therapist telling her one thing. Not um, and what was the size of the bruise on her face that you observed on December 17th? Maybe like this, in more than one place, about an inch. You said it was in, so is it fair to say those are small bruises in more than one place? So there was, how many one inch size bruises were on her face that you observed? I'm not a good person to ask this question to. I don't really remember. I wasn't looking to memorize it. I think there's other data that will support this, not from me. A few minutes ago, you briefly spoke about seeing bruises about an, about an inch on, on Amber Heard's face. You recall that testimony? Yes. And 
you were you were making motions with your fingers. But, but I was saying multiple. I'm not saying one. Right. You were seeing multiple multiple bruises on Amber's face. Yes. Correct. When you um, were talking about how the size of it, you your fingers were under your eyes. Did you you remember seeing the bruises under Amber's eyes? That's what I recall. They may have been in other places throughout her body. I don't remember, but I, I do remember her face. We can turn to page 13. Um, in the blue, where it says, was chaotic, violent. Do you know what Mr. Depp was referring to there? I, I, what I said previously, and I'll say it again, um, he's kind of doing a retrospective of trying to understand the relationship um, and is characterizing it as chaotic and violent, but she gave as good as she got, and he, uh, and she, she started it, but, in, you know, he's, he's complaining, but he's also just kind of describing what the relationship was. His um, mother is dead at this point. The relationship is not, <laughs> is not good. It's over pretty much. And he's trying to come to terms with it. And he still loves her <laughs> and is mourning. So he's just, he, he's a very articulate man. And when left alone to speak, he can describe intelligently what's going on. I think I'm kind of, I think while he's talking and I'm not trying to be obtrusive with my taking notes, I'm listening, I'm talking, but I'm also copying down a word here and there. So my belief is that those are his words. And, and Mr. Depp, I think you testified about this, but I just want to make sure it's clear. Mr. Depp told you Amber gave as good as she got, correct? Correct. Did you ask what Mr. Depp meant by gave as good as she got? Um, I was pretty aware of what he meant. I agreed. What did he, what did you understand Mr. Depp to mean? All right, I have. Um, she initiated fights. She started violence. She uh, rose to the challenge if he started first, which I, and so she, in my opinion, that had been established throughout the relationship that she fought as hard as he did. And he tried to de-escalate far more than I think she did. Do you know, did Mr. Depp talk about his fingertip with you before June 18th, 2016? No, because I would have written it when he first mentioned it to me. Did you ever see Mr. Depp with an injury to his finger during any of your sessions with Mr. Depp? Or, or that, counseling during, or, you know, sessions together with Amber Heard? During that session, yes, he showed me. On June 18th, 2016, but before June 18th, 2016, did you ever see an injury to Mr. Depp's finger? No. But in, yes, no, I didn't. When we were uh, going through Amber's, uh, the incidents where Amber described Mr. Depp being violent, Mr. Depp was not present, correct? That's true. All right, thank you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we'll go ahead and take our lunch for the afternoon now. No outside research, not talk to anybody, and we'll give you till 2.15, okay? So you can be excused with Debbie Lusa now. Thank you. For this afternoon, do you need this TV anymore for this afternoon? Um, for the first witness or the last witness? So we can put it down during lunch. Okay, perfect. All right, we'll be at back at 2.15 and thank you.
Um, the one we have in the binder, it looks different than the one you had on the screen, so I'm not sure. The one on the screen looked much more redacted, but maybe this is redacted? I think, I think the only thing that were redacted was the, the phone numbers. Okay, so the emails are all right, everything... I just want to make sure because it seemed like the one on the screen had a little more redaction than the one I'm seeing here. So I just. I didn't think it did, but I, I stand corrected. Well, there are identifiers on here, at least emails. There's no cell phones on here. Those have right, been redacted. I, I didn't think the emails were redacted and the staff, I thought they were the same, but um, okay. I'll do whatever the court. No, I don't, I don't care. I just want to make sure everybody agrees that the one that I have is the one that's in evidence. I think, Your Honor, the one that was on the screen did, in fact, redact the email addresses okay. also, okay. which is not the same as I think what you have. So we can, I think we can replace it probably. Oh, oh, with did, the, you did you redact it? We, we didn't. Um, oh, David okay. Murphy re redacted oh, it. Did. Okay, I apologize, Your Honor. He, yeah. <laughs> I apologize. Um, so, yeah, we will provide you the redacted. We'll provide you the redacted. So I need a redacted there. Is there any chance in the future that you could guys maybe can talk ahead of time and get this these redacted ahead of, ahead of, ahead of time or something? Possibly? Trying, okay. Yeah. All right. It's just I, I already I still have three pending redaction now. Right. And two of those I think. Oh, look! Look with a smile on your face, Mr. Rottenborn. I see that. Okay. And I know. He wants to be the star of the day. That's okay. 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 All right. So now I have eight forty-four. The redacted copy, correct? And I have two ten. The redacted copy. Okay, perfect. All right. So that then just leaves me with 397 then, correct? The, um, the one I just... 548. 548 also. Okay, 548 and 397 now. And we expect to have that to you. Okay, perfect. All right. Anything else this time? Oh, good. Okay. Ready for the jury. All right. Your next witness, Mr. Chief. Uh, Gina Dudas. Right, so you say that again. I'm sorry. Gina Dudas. Okay. Can you spell that last name for me? D e u t e r s. Thank you. <laughs> All right, thank you. All right. And good afternoon, Ms. Duders. Hi. Would you please state your full name for the record? Yes, it's um, Georgina Diane Duters, but I, I go by Gina. Okay. And uh, Ms. Duders, uh, where are you from? London. And can you tell us a little bit about what your occupation is? Um, I currently am a freelance creator who 
kind of conceptualizes and shoots um, and edits um, photographs and clips largely for social media. And how long have you been doing that? Uh, just a few years. Um, before that, I was a visual effects coordinator for movies. And can you tell us just very briefly what that means? Um, it's, it's basically the managing of CG and effects in films, the delivery of, and um, yeah, just the managing of that, yeah. And how long did you do that? Oh, um, from 2002 to 2016. Okay. Any films we might recognize? Um, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, um, The Dark Knight, um, terrible Christmas movie that I won't mention, um, uh, Pirates of the Caribbean 4, yeah. <laughs> do you know Johnny Depp? I do. And how do you know Johnny Depp? He is a good friend of mine. When did you first meet Mr. Depp? I met him um, summer of 2005. Um, it was actually at the Charlie and the Chocolate Factory premiere. My husband, Stephen, introduced me to him um, at a dinner after the premiere. And uh, yeah, he was super sweet and warm and kind of ushered us in to join him at dinner. and. and I remember being very nervous, like I am now, um, and yeah, that's when we first met. Okay. Uh, you say your husband, Stephen, introduced you to Mr. Depp. Yeah. Uh, how, did, how did your husband know him? I'm sorry? How did your husband, Stephen, know Mr. Depp? Oh, he started working with him on Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Um, he started off in production, but then um, joined the Depp department um, during the shoot. And does he still work for Mr. Depp? Yeah. And in what capacity? Um, well, he started off as like a personal uh, assistant and it's kind of um, developed into a producer writer type role with Johnny's guidance. Uh, so for how long has he worked for Mr. Depp then? 18 years, I think, I think since 2004. Now over those 18 years, um, where has he been working? Um, all over the place. Um, it depends on where the film is is being shot. So, um, Bahamas, Hawaii, London, LA, kind of all over. And have you? Where have you been during this time? Well, um, Stephen and I. Our first two films were we worked on the same film, but then he went off to do Pirates, and I went off to do other films. So. I wouldn't always be with them. Um, I know that in between my projects, um, you know, Johnny was always mindful that me and Stephen didn't spend too much time apart, so he would usually be, you know, kind enough to um, fly me out uh, to be with them wherever they were. Okay. About how many times would that happen in a given year, if you can estimate for us? <laughs> um, Two to three, yeah. And they'd be like, you know, sometimes I'd be with them for like a month, sometimes just a couple of weeks. Okay. Uh, can you just generally describe for us very briefly um, your husband's relationship with Mr. Depp? Um, it's a great one. <laughs> it's, um, they are very close professionally and um, personally. Um, I know that Stephen um, really respects Johnny and looks up to him and Johnny's been a, a mentor to him um, and has really encouraged Stephen's career um, develop um, uh, and they're great friends too. Okay. And can you just very briefly and very generally tell us what it was like on, on those time periods when you were spending time, uh, chunks of time with Mr. Depp and, and your uh, husband? Well, if the It's basic Gross. foundational fact, Your Honor. Just... I, I'll, I'll allow it. That's fine. Go ahead. I got I, Okay. What was the question, sorry? Just generally describe for us. Okay, what, so, so if, they were, if they were working, it would be, you know, like on wrap, we'd kind of have dinner together, um, and then I'd kind of entertain myself while the boys went off to work. <laughs> 
if it was during downtime, you know, he, it would um, probably be like a family holiday, so it would include his long-term partner, Vanessa, and their little kids, um, which was always really lovely, um, really happy memories there. Uh, so it kind of depended. Okay. Uh, how well would you say you know Mr. Depp? Very well. Okay. Over the course of your friendship with Mr. Depp, and I apologize, did you say it had been 17 years? I'm not great at maths, but 2005 to now, I think, is 17. Close <laughs> yeah. Okay. Over the course of your friendship with Mr. Depp, have you ever seen Mr. Depp take drugs? Yes. And which ones? I've seen him smoke weed and um, occasionally uh, cocaine. Okay. Have you ever seen him drink? Yes. All right. Have you ever partaken of any of these substances at the same time? Yes. Okay. About how many times would you estimate you've seen Mr. Depp use cocaine? Oh, gosh. Um, I mean, it's usually like... A you know, kind of a celebratory event, like after a gig or a, a party or something. Um, 20? I don't know. Um, 20 times over the... I don't know. Yeah. I... About 20 times? About, yeah. And yeah. that's over... And that's over I mean, what? yeah, I haven't been kind of keeping count, but, but it's not a... It's not, it's not a regular thing. It's sporadic. It's... Okay, and that's 20 times over what period of time? Gosh, um, I think like the last maybe 10 years. Okay. And uh, how often have you seen Mr. Depp uh, consume alcohol? Um, since I've met him. Okay. Um, can you describe for us um, how Mr. Depp seems to respond to cocaine? Um, I quite honestly can't gauge much difference in his demeanor. Um, you know, this stuff kind of tends to make the average person a bit chattier and maybe stays up a bit longer than they should. Uh, but um, nothing out of the ordinary. Okay. Same question for alcohol. How would you say, based on your interactions with him while he's drinking, how does he seem to uh, respond to it? Um, it's kind of annoying, but he, he doesn't, he holds his liquor very well. Um, so, uh, gosh, I kind of, um, more jovial or just, I've, I've never seen him. I've honestly never seen him like drunk, drunk, I've never been with him in that kind of situation. Does he seem to drink to excess in your experience? No. Okay. Have you ever seen him get angry or violent while on cocaine? No, definitely not. Have you ever seen him get angry or violent while on alcohol? No. Ms. Duders, do you know Amber Laura Heard? Yes. And when did you first meet Miss Hurd? When did when did I? When yes. Did, oh, um, well, we met kind of very briefly on the set of the Ron Diary, but you know it was just kind of quick greeting in the craft tent, I think. And just so everybody's on the same page, um, what is the Ron Diary? The Ron Diary is a movie that we shot in. 2009 in Puerto Rico um, and yeah it starred Johnny and, and Amber and I was I was I was there with Stephen that was one of the times that I wasn't working so I traveled out to be with Stephen and I was I was around I did end up doing a little thing for the visual effects department but mostly it was leisure for me was there anything noteworthy about your interactions with Miss Heard on that occasion no When did you next meet Miss Heard? We, on I think a couple of years later, um, Ram Diary press tour. I went to the premiere in London, and again it was just a kind of um, you know 
greeting. It, it wasn't, we didn't kind of hang out, chat properly or anything. And again, just so, just so everybody's on the same page, what is a press tour? A press tour is when, um, when a film comes out, the actors and the director usually travel around with um, the film and show it in different cities all over the world. And um, the actors usually have to do interviews to promote it and just get the word out. Okay. And this was a press tour for Run Diary? Yeah. And what city were you in? I, I went to the London one. And does, does anything stand out to you about your interactions with Ms. Hurd on that occasion? No, she, no. Okay. Were you aware at that point that Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd had started a relationship? Yes. And how were you aware? Because um, Depp's team, oh, Johnny's team, sorry, um, Johnny's team, um, there's just always an open constant flow of information, um, you know, because ultimately, you know, Jerry Judge w would be looking after Johnny, so would kind of get updates as to where they were going and what he was doing. And so in that way, we got kind of, you know, notification, <laughs> notified that, uh, you know, they just got together. And you mentioned a name there, Jerry Judge. Can you just Tell the jury who that is. Um, okay, I don't want to be upset, but Jerry Judge was Johnny's long-term security um, uh, guy, and he, yeah, was a dearly, a dear individual. Um, we all loved him very much, and he was he was like family. He was like a dad, um, and unfortunately, he passed away. When did you next see Ms. Hurd after the press tour uh, in London? Okay, so that's, that was like 2011. Um, I think it was on a trip that we accompanied Johnny and Amber on to Las Vegas for a few days. And can you estimate for us, just approximately, when that was? Oh, maybe that was 2012. I'm so sorry, like, um, um, I, 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 I'm, I'm blanking on the, on the date, um, but it, it would have been after they you know, started seeing each other maybe a, a couple of months afterwards. Um, and we just went out there for a few days. I don't, I don't remember if it was just like a little excursion for them um, or if Johnny had something to do there. I don't remember that. It was just for like two, three days. Anything stand out to you about that trip? Um, I was kind of excited to meet Amber, you know, because she was Johnny's new girl and um but I remember kind of trying to you know kind of make eye contact and um it, yes um I kind of felt a bit ignored which is fine you know we're staff or whatever so I didn't I didn't really chat with her when you say staff, what, what, what do you mean? Well, I mean, I'm, I'm not employed by Johnny, but, you know, I'm obviously Stephen's wife and he's staff and, um, yeah, I, I didn't really interact with her. Okay. Um, so can you kind of describe what happened when you saw her then, if anything? Um, no, no, nothing, nothing of note, just... Um, that she didn't really engage or um, make, you know, I, yeah, just didn't really acknowledge uh, okay. our presence. Did you see uh, Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd interact at all yeah. on that trip? Yeah. Okay, and can you describe that for us? They seemed pretty in love. Um, they were tactile and, um, you know, they seemed happy. Okay. 
When did you next meet Miss Heard? Um, when Johnny and Stephen had gone out on location to shoot The Lone Ranger. So I think that might have been the next year. So out of date, sorry. Um, yeah, so, oh, um, so, um, you know, I think through Johnny and Stephen, Amber and I were um, kind of put in touch and we went vintage shopping together and um, uh, went to get a coffee once. Um, and and then with Johnny and Stephen kind of looked around some galleries, um, art galleries. About how long would you say the period was that you and Miss Heard were together in this time frame? How long were we both out on location? Right, yeah. I'm not sure about her and, and I know that I know that I personally made two trips, um, which seemed to coincide with her being there. So, it, you know, it was nice. Um, and, um, you know, kind of meeting up to go vintage shopping, she was really, really lovely, really sweet. We got on very well um, and it was fun. It was, yeah, you know, she's very charming. Did you discuss her relationship with Mr. Depp at all? Um, I remember like going for a coffee um, and she seemed a bit, um, just a bit kind of frustrated that uh, I don't think Johnny was ready to go public with their relationship yet. Um, and um, I think that was, you know, frustrating. For her. Did you form an impression that she wanted to go public immediately? All right, I'll sustain as to speculation. Next question. Were you out in public? Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yes. Um, when you were interacting with Miss Heard in this time frame, did you notice at all whether she was wearing makeup? No, I don't think she was wearing makeup. Um, she's naturally beautiful. It's, um, I remember, you know, just thinking how gorgeous her skin was and how, yeah, pretty she was. And, I mean, how, how could you tell that she wasn't wearing makeup? Anymore? Well, I um, consider myself to be quite <laughs> the makeup expert. Um, you know, earlier on in my adult life, I kind of got hormonal acne, which was awful. So I got kind of professional at covering that up. Um, so I think I'm pretty good at telling if someone's wearing, you know, like foundation or concealer. Uh, have you ever heard of Arnica cream? Yes. In fact, um, I actually was using it the other week. Um, you can, you can use the microphone. Just, I'm just having trouble hearing you. I'm sorry. Oh, there you go. It's on. There you go. The question was, have you ever heard of it? And she answered it and then continued, Pat. So it's... All right. She's answered the question. She's answered the question. All right. If you want to ask another question. Oh, sure, you're on. Uh, what is it? It's a homeopathic uh, lotion that you use to um, help bruises heal faster. And have you ever used it yourself? Yes. I was using it a couple of weeks ago because I had a huge bruise on my hip after I had a fall. Okay. Um, yeah, so I know what it is. And can you just describe for those of us who have no idea, like myself, um, what does Arnica cream look like? Um, oh, sorry, that was me. Um, it's kind of like a white emollient cream, um, opaque, that you rub into your skin. Um, you rub into the bruise. Once it's been rubbed in, what does it look like? Transparent. Okay. So is the bruise still visible? Oh, absolutely, yeah. All right. Sustain as to leading. Understood. All right. All right. After uh, after after that, uh, those interactions with Miss Heard on the set of um, Lone Ranger in uh, did you say twenty thirteen? I'm not sure if that's an objection, but. 
I'll, 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 no, no, I'll withdraw the date, Your right. Honor. Just after after your interactions uh, with Ms. Hurd on the set of The Lone Ranger, uh, Ms. Duters, when did you next uh, when do you next recall seeing Ms. Hurd? I think it was on the press tour for The Lone Ranger. Um, by that point, I believe they their relationship was public, and um, we travelled to Japan with um, the kids, Johnny's kids and her friend, um, Brittany, who I think was, you know, along as Am's friend, but also to help take care of the kids while, you know, Johnny was working and... Okay. And why, why were you traveling to Japan again? Um, because the Lone Ranger was premiering there and they were doing press. And then we also traveled like to um, Berlin, I think as well. And it's all around. Were you traveling with Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd? Yes. Okay. Did you witness any interactions between Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd on these trips? Um, I mean, just generally on the plane, um, nothing to note. I'm, there was um, an incident like when we were all at dinner together um and when i say we all i mean also the other actors and the producers and director um and i noticed that johnny was kind of hiding a drink on the side of his chair and taking secret sips um and 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 i just i i noticed you know she, she kind of saw that and was quite angry about it. And um, I couldn't hear what, what was said, but he seemed to get be kind of getting it got told off by, you know, the telling off, um, which was, it was kind of weird. You know, it's a bit like um, telling off a child. What was he drinking? I think it was, it was champagne. Okay, like a flute of champagne? Yeah, something like that. Okay. Um, did anything, do you have any impressions of, how, how would you describe their body language when they were having this conversation? Um, uh, um, quite, um, you know, I think she was really angry, so, um, Um, yeah, I, um, <laughs> just, uh, just kind of like dominant and, and, um, just very angry and, you know, putting, just telling, you know, him off. Okay. And how would you describe his body language? Um, I think, you know, quite... Uh, just exhausted by the whole being told off like a child. Okay. Over this period of time, and just to clarify, um, were Miss Hurd and Miss Depp public at this point? Yes. Okay. So it was. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Well, I mean, when we arrived at airports, there was like photographers everywhere, so. Uh, and they, and we, you know, wasn't a, a very public. I, yeah. Okay. Over this period of time, then after they'd gone public, did you uh, ever witness them together? Um, did you have a perspective on their interactions in general? Objection relevance foundation. I'm just, do you, is your mic is it on? Because I'm just pushed it. I'm sorry. There now it is. Okay. <laughs> thank you. All right. Objection. Oh, relevance foundation leading. Well, their interactions are directly relevant, Your Honor. Uh, I can lay more foundation if the court wants. You don't lay foundation, that's fine. Uh, did you ever witness Ms. Hurd and Mr. Depp together in this time period? Um, sorry, could you repeat it? Sorry, if, I know you said it a few times, but could you just repeat it one more time? Of course. Um, over this next couple of years, uh, yeah. after, after the press tour for mm -hmm. um, Lone Ranger, did you have occasion to interact with Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd at the same time? Did you see them together? Um, very rarely. 
Okay. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking maybe a dinner here or there. Okay. Yeah. From those occasions when you did see them, did you form any impressions about how they were getting along based on their interactions with each other that you personally witnessed? Uh, I still don't think he established the foundation. It's been a few few times that he, he saw a couple dinners and she's asking for his, her perspective on their relationship. All right. On those particular occasions. Well, what's the relevance of her impressions? I'll rephrase here. Okay. How would you describe their interactions on those occasions when you witnessed them? It's the same, same thing, Aaron. There's still no foundation. If she's present... I'll, I'll allow it. If you, okay. it's fine. Um, I... They seemed okay. I mean, uh, you know, they could be quite tense. Um... But nothing, nothing to note, nothing I would okay. um, remark on. Were you invited to their wedding? Yeah. Yes. And, and did you attend? Yes. Okay. Can you just generally describe for us what the wedding was like? It was definitely a predominantly amber event in the sense that a large percentage of the guests were her friends and family. Um, and, you know, a lot of his friends and family couldn't make it because it seemed to happen so quickly. Um, uh, and yeah, they seem to be having, oh, oh, her and her friends seem to be having a wonderful time. Where did the wedding take place? On, um, Johnny's Island in the Bahamas. Okay. <coughs> and did you have any interactions with Miss Heard during this time period or? Yes. I, oh. Did you, did you talk to Miss Heard, um, when you were at the wedding? Yeah, um, you know, there were dinners and it was certainly a you know, a celebration every day. Um, you know, uh, <laughs> Amber and her friend Rocky gave me my first um, taste of MDMA, you know, and everyone was on, everyone, you know, like all her friends were on it. And so I tried that for the first time with them. Um, yeah, it, it was like a party atmosphere. Okay. Um, just briefly, can you sketch out for us in a little more detail um, how you came to take MDMA on that uh, at the wedding? Oh, well, um, it, it was evening time. I think I was a bit hungover from the day before, and I can imagine those two saw me and when they f first dropped the pill into my hand, I thought it was like a, a supplement, like a vitamin supplement to make me feel better. But um, no, they, they, they quickly said it was MDMA and I kind of decided to throw caution to the wind and just try it. Okay. You mentioned that you traveled with Mr. Depp and Ms. Heard to Japan and Berlin and possibly other locations as well. Uh, can you tell us where else you traveled with them? Um, well, after the wedding, we headed to Australia. And why did you go to Australia? Because that's where Johnny would be shooting Pirates 5. Okay, and approximately when do you think you were in Australia? I think that I flew with Johnny and, um, and Jerry Judge um, and Stephen and a few others. Um, I think that was February. Um, and um, 
and and Johnny stayed in a house um, and Stephen and I were based like a 35 minute drive away on the shoreline in the hotels. Um, and I think Amber flew in a while afterwards. Okay. Uh, you said you thought it was February. Do you recall the year? Yes, I do. 20, 2015. Okay. Um, so just so we have the cast of characters clear, who, who from this group was in Australia at this point? Um, so we've got, um, on the plane that I was on, it was Johnny, Jerry Judge, Stephen Dutas, um, Debbie Lloyd, and myself. And maybe one of maybe one other. Okay. Um, you mentioned the name there. I don't think we've heard before. Can you just tell the jury quickly who Debbie Lloyd is? Okay. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, we just have to take a few housekeeping matters up, so we're just going to have you take a, a recess for a few minutes, okay? So again, no outside research and don't talk to anybody, okay? Ms. Duders, I just had a question for you. Have you been watching the trial this past week? Um, I've seen clips of it online, yeah. You've been watching, so you have seen parts of this trial? Yeah. Okay, and witness testimonies? Yeah, I've seen clips of You've seen them, thanks. Yeah. All right, does anybody have any follow-up questions? Uh, Ms. Ms. Duders, um, have you been watching it doesn't matter. She's been watching clips of witness testimony. All right. You're excused, ma'am. You can have your excuse. Okay. Thank you. I will, I will instruct the jury to, to strike the testimony of Ms. Dewars. There's a rule on witnesses, Mr. Monas. I understood, Your Honor. This is All the right. first word. I, 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 I believe that. I have no doubt in my mind that this is the first you've heard of it. Have a good day, ma'am. Thank you. I, 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 Mr. Hop, I got it the first time. Thank you. Your next witness is going to be on deposition, right? Yes, Your Honor. It's going to be on video. Okay. All right. Did you want to just take the afternoon recess now before we? Because I, <laughs> your, your video thing. I'll take the afternoon recess, then I'll instruct the jury. Okay. All right. We'll take fifteen minutes. Let's come back at three fifteen. All right.
Yes, sir. Sure.
You're welcome. get somebody from over here. Okay. Okay, sure. We'll take that up. All right. Oh, goody. Which exhibit is this? Okay, and make sure they're agreeable redactions first. All right, so 397 with these redactions. Okay, there we go. If I don't give it to Jamie now, I'll forget. Okay. All right, that takes care of 397. Now we have. We're going to have to probably start the video tonight and probably have to finish it tomorrow morning, correct? Uh, yes, by the length of it? Okay. And are the exhibits, so you're going to be switching back and forth again? Uh, I think, I think Your Honor, it? that we're just going to run this off of ours. Um, I believe the parties have worked out the redactions. Okay. Uh, I think I could be wrong. Oh, is there any objections to the exhibits? I don't think we've talked at all about what exhibits were coming in. That's for... music to my ears. I know, I know. <laughs> Um, I, we did, I don't think we had any, we, we've just exchanged the objections for this, so. Oh, well, in that, in that case, I think we're handling, introducing them to the extent they get introduced, and we'll right. discuss any objections. That's, that's how I understand it. It would be okay. a witness that when it. Oh, so we're done. just going to do objections as we get to them. Yes. That's fine. I don't have okay. a problem with that. that. That works out. Okay, so we'll start it, and when we're at 5 o'clock, we'll see where we are, and we'll find a good breaking point, okay? All right. Are we ready for the jury, then? Make sure you're ready. I'm ready. Okay, all right. You ready? All right, thank you.
Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, the court is striking Ms. Gina Duder's testimony in its entirety from the record, okay? Therefore, the court further instructs you, the jury, to disregard her testimony in its entirety. Understand? All right, thank you. All right, your next witness. Uh, your Honor, we call uh, Dr. David Kipper by video designation. All right, All right Dr. Kipper. Class, and I represent Amber Heard. Uh, could you please provide your full name? David Allen, A L A N, Kipper, K I P P E R. And what is your uh, business address, Dr. Kipper? 153 South Lasky, L A S K Y Drive, Beverly Hills, 90212, California. Um, and now you're, you're a doctor, correct? Yes. And an internist? Yes. How long have you been practicing medicine? Since 1977. And um, I noticed on your website, it says you provide concierge health care. What does that mean? That means I provide health care on a retainer base arrangement. What do you mean by retainer based arrangement? Patients pay an annual fee and all services are included and I'm available 24 7. <clears throat> now you also practice um, part of your practice is, is addiction treatment is that correct? Correct. And you've written a book on addiction? Yes. Well, what's the title of the book? The Addiction Solution. And by addiction, do you mean addiction to drugs and alcohol? Yes. Is there any other addictions that you uh, practice treating? Well, there are behavioral addictions, but those are far less common. Um, and in your practice, you've dealt with patients who've blacked out from drugs or alcohol? Yes. Who is Lisa Bean? A former employee in my office. And what was Ms. Bean's role in your office? She was a receptionist. And how long did Ms. Bean work for you? I don't have that specific information. I believe it was about three years. In working with Ms. Bean, did you find her to be honest? Uh, no, actually. Why was she not honest? She was inappropriate with certain patients um, beyond what I consider to be professional. She discriminated in some regards uh, to some patients. Um, she was divisive in the office and created a lot of problems with the other staff. Oh, uh, no, she quit. And who is Debbie Lloyd? Debbie Lloyd is a nurse that I have known for many years who has worked with me on uh, home care and addiction cases. And is, is Ms. Lloyd a, a, um, an employee or a contractor with you? She's a contractor. Does she still contract with you, Ms. Lloyd? Uh, yes, until recently. She now has a new position, so um, I'm not able to have her services at this point. What was Ms. Lloyd's role in Mr. Depp's care? She served as his RN, as his registered nurse. And was uh, Lloyd paid by you for, for Mr. Depp's care? Yes. So would it work that Ms. you would bill Mr. Depp uh, for the care that, Ms. that you gave and Ms. Lloyd gave and then paid from that? Yes. And who is Erin Borum? She's an RN that was employed 
to help care for Amber. Was Ms. Gorham also a uh, contract nurse? Yes. And so did she, ha did Ms. Gorham have any role in Mr. Depp's care? Only if, um, if Debbie was unavailable, Aaron would step in and vice versa. And, um, and, and um, did Ms. Borum uh, work with you on anybody else besides Mr. Depp or Ms. Hurd? Yes. <clears throat> Does Ms. Borum still work with you? Ms. Borum now has two little kids, so she's not really available. I understand, I have two kids myself. <laughs> um, when were you first contacted about treating Mr. Depp? Somewhere in the spring of 2014. And do you recall how you, who first referred you to Mr. Depp? He was referred by another patient. Did you talk to Tracy Jacobs at all about Mr. Depp? Yes. What did you understand the business relationship was between Ms. Jacobs and Mr. Depp? That she was his agent. Why don't we put up, uh, Alex, can you put up uh, Kipper 3, please? Dr. Kipper, do you recognize uh, this document? Yes, I do. And what is it? Uh, this is a, an intake evaluation that I had with Mr. Depp regarding his treatment. And uh, do you keep these uh, notes in the normal course of business? Yes. And the, the notes are meant to be accurate? <laughs> yes. Okay. And, and did you take the notes or did someone take them for you? I took these notes. Is May 22nd, 2014 the first time that you met Mr. Depp? No. Your Honor, I... When did you... I'm sorry. Thank you. Your Honor, I, I move to admit uh, Defendant's Exhibit 220, which is what uh, Dr. Kipper was referring to there. Any objection to 220, Defendant's 220? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, foundation, authentication, hearsay, um, and uh, 403. All right. Hold on. Let me get. Let me catch. I can. I can get it here. It's fine. Two twenty. And Your Honor, um, Dr. Kipper testified just now that these are his notes that he keeps in the regular course of business of his meeting with his initial consultation with Mr. Depp. Um, which is what he does as a doctor and you know and it's his uh, medical records of his report with Mr. Depp so I think he's established the foundation of that. All right. Any, any, yes sir. Any response? Mr. Moniz? Uh, uh, we're just having a slight technical issue pulling up the exhibit your honor. I apologize. Okay, that's One minute.
Uh, Your Honor, we, we would stand on the hearsay and relevance objections. Um, there's a lot of material in this document that is, is not really pertain, uh, germane to the issues in this case. Uh, at minimum, and to the extent admitted, it should be admitted in redacted form. Um, in, in addition, um, it's not clear that there's any hearsay exception that, that would apply to everything in here. Not everything in here is a statement of a, of a party opponent, I don't believe. Um, and finally, the medical records um, reflected here go, go well beyond any, any possible uh, relevance to the issues in this case. Right. It, it's, it's not inappropriate. We, we, we would stand on that objection. All the statements in here are statements of Mr. Depp, so they either be a party admission or it's use of, and and it's Dr. K, Dr. Kipper is it's his evaluation of Mr. Depp to 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 treat him for his as you'll see his addictions. So I think this is all relevant. There's no there's no hearsay, and if there is, it's, it meets the exception is it's all Mr. Depp's statements. It's, it's, it's a business. It's a bus it, They've not even argued it, but it's a business. It's clearly a business record. It's clear from the. It's clear from the document, Your Honor, that there's more in here. Uh, that, that the records here are at minimum broader than it is germane to this case. I mean, uh, this this goes well beyond any any medical records that could conceivably be relevant. Uh, we would respectfully submit uh, to the issues in this case. I understand, but uh, given latitude as to the family history and medical family medical history, too, so I'll allow two twenty and evidence. Okay. Okay. Understood, okay. Your Honor. All right. Thank, thank you, Your Honor. Um, I guess, can, can we publish it to the jury? Can we? Not if you're watching. Oh, um, well, I, the way we've, uh, that's fine, Your Honor. We can okay. just have him testify and then it's fine. Okay, that's He's fine. Testify. All right, thank, thank you, Your Honor. Mm -hmm. Mr. Depp, prior to May 22nd, 2014. I met him a couple months before that uh, as just an initial introduction to discuss possible treatment. And where were you when you first met Mr. Depp? He met me at my home office. And were there any, did you have any notes of that meeting at the home office? No. What did you discuss with Mr. Depp at that first meeting? At that meeting, I discussed with him uh, my involvement in helping him with his substance issues. And what substance issues did he say, did he, say he had? So to answer your question, uh, this Mr. Depp was seeking treatment for substance abuse and wanted to um, wanted to detoxify from his substance abuse. Did he mention, did Mr. Depp say what substances he was trying to detox from? Yes, and as indicated in this note, uh, it was polysubstance. So there was alcohol, opiates, uh, benzodiazepines, and stimulants. So um, you referenced the note, which is, um, Kipper three in your meeting with Mr. Depp uh, in the months before May 22nd, 2014, Mr. Depp was looking to um, detox from alcohol, opiates, uh, benzo and cocaine. Those, those substances were in his history. The substance that he was at that point concerned about uh, and abusing were opiates. And when you say he was concerned about uh, the, the substance he was abusing was opiates, was this in the conversation before May 22nd, 2014? I can't remember. Okay. So you had this initial conversation with Mr. Depp and then um, you had this initial consultation with him a few, a few months later, is that correct? Yes, that's correct. And you met with Mr. Depp in Boston? Yes. And Mr. Depp was filming a movie at the time? Yes. And in your notes, you, you say um, he had had a um, history of self-medicating behaviors involving multiple substances of abuse. These include alcohol, opiates, benzodiazepines, and stimulants, cocaine. Uh, is, that, is that accurate, what he told you? Yes, that's in my, that, that statement's in my notes, correct. Okay. 
Um, and with, and in addition to opiates, was he was Mr. Depp uh, addicted to any other prescription drugs? No, other than opiates, no. What is what is roxycodone? It's an opiate. <clears throat> uh, and what is what is Adderall? Adderall is a stimulant. Okay. And was Mr. Depp uh, addicted to Adderall? No. What is Xanax? Xanax is a benzodiazepine. This first, uh, this first paragraph on this page, um, these are notes based off of um, your discussion with Mr. Depp. Yes. And then on the second page where it says physical examination, that's just what you conducted at the time on Mr. Yeah. Depp? Yes. And where it says impression on the third page, that was your impression of Mr. Depp at the time of May 22nd, 2014? Yes. And under that, the plan, that that's, that's documenting your plan for Mr. Depp going forward? Correct. Did Mr. Depp paid for this visit? Yes. When was the plan to start this treatment of Mr. Depp? After his, after he completed his current film. Dr. Kipper, do you recognize uh, Kipper Exhibit 4? Yes. And what are the, what, what is Kipper Exhibit 4? It's a progress note of dated June 11th. 2014. And and did you, you keep these notes in the normal course of business? Yes. And did you take these notes? Yes. And the notes are meant to be accurate, correct? Yes. Okay. What is um? You had mentioned it before, you but what is polysubstance abuse? Your Honor, Poly is multiple. You can pause. So, thank you. It takes a second for it to catch up. No, so. I, I understand. Okay. Thank you. Your Honor, I move to the admission of the Defendant's Exhibit 246. same type of medical record uh, that was just admitted of for 220. Any objection? I'll give you a moment to read it. Thank you, Your Honor. Just, just one moment. Understanding your your honor's uh, ruling on the last uh, record, I think we'll we'll uh, we'll, we'll anticipate that it, the the exhibit can come in. All right. So I will take that as no objection. <laughs> All right. Two forty six in evidence. Thank you. Thank you. Multiple substance issues. Multiple substance uh, abuse. And you were going to be treating Mr. Depp for multi substance abuse, correct? I was going to be treating Mr. Depp for opiate issues. On the bottom of the first page where it says impression, that was your impression of Mr. Depp at the time? Where it says polysubstance abuse? Yes. <clears throat> and were these the drugs that Mr. Depp was taking at the time, which is at the bottom of page one of Kipper 4? I'm sorry, can you, am I relating to the first uh, entry under impression? It says, uh, well, what, where is it, what does it mean where it says uh, dopaminergic imbalance with lithium 300 mg bid to be increased to 300 mg TID? 
those were medications that I had planned to use upon our uh, treatment. For all the medications that are on Kipper 4 under impression, those are medications you plan to use with Mr. Depp, is that correct? That's correct. And on the next page where it talks about opiate dependence, uh, you right, we'll maintain on current Norco dosage TID until current filming is completed in mid to late July. Um, Mr. Depp agrees to undergo detoxification with clonidin, robaxin, bentol, and anxiolytics. I can't pronounce it, I'm sorry. But is that correct? Yeah, you did a good job. That's, that's, that's what it says, yes. Okay. What does TID mean? Or, you see where it says? Three times a day. Three times a day, okay. And Mr. Depp was also going to undergo a sobriety program, is that correct? Yes. And it says to be regularly drug tested in my office. How regularly was he to be drug tested, Mr. Depp? That was dependent upon his progress and, and my understanding of how he was doing. And, and um, if he was progressing well, how often would Mr. Depp be drug tested? Okay, you can answer. The answer is what I said. It would really depend um, Adam on how he was doing at the time and how he was progressing through his treatment. Do you recall how many drug tests you gave Mr. Depp in 2014? No. You gave him at least one, correct? Yes, okay. I believe so. I'd have to, I'd have to check through my records. Okay. And, and, De and De Deborah Lloyd was going to be Mr. Depp's, uh, nurse, correct? Correct. You can take down uh, Kipper 4. And can you put up uh, Kipper 5, please? And Your Honor, we would uh, move into evidence uh, Plaintiff Exhibit 40. Plaintiff's Exhibit 40? Any, is there any objection? So you, you're, my understanding, you're putting in, you want to move in the, the entire document? We have, uh, we have redacted portions of it. Um, Your Honor, I would just have to look uh, to make, I'm, you know, I, I'm generally okay with it. They're just, I'd have to, with 123 pages and then there's certain redactions. I just would need to see right. what was redacted. I'm, I'm right. generally okay with All right. the, so, of the documents. So I'll enter it, but with the reservation for redactions that have, need to be made. Okay. Thank you, Your Honor. Understood. You can do that. All right. That's fine. 40. thinking of publishing it, but I would ask that they not publish it and just let the video play as he testifies to it, and then we can discuss what needs to be. Is that okay? Given the lack of agreement, uh, con confirmed agreement on the redactions, Your Honor, I think that's, that's okay. fine. We should sure. play the video. We'll do that. Thank you.
And Kipper 5 is a long document um, that came out of your files. Um, do you recognize the document? Yes. What is Kipper 5? It's a progress note dated the 12th of June, 2014. I, so this, this exhibit, Kipper 5, which I will refer to throughout the, um, your deposition, is a multi-page document that is progress notes throughout uh, from multiple dates that you produced that came out of your files um do you know who created these progress notes i created these progress notes it wasn't it wasn't miss it wasn't miss lloyd no these are my notes okay all right <clears throat> And you kept the notes in the normal course of business? Yes. And again, the notes are meant to be accurate? Yes. Oh, um, oh, I'm sorry. Let's go back up. So this 61314, that is that is your notes. Correct. Okay. Um, and it says, um, met with patient in his apartment. Patient continued to be pleasant and cooperative. He stated that he initially started taking opiates after some dental work and became dependent on them. Do you, rec you recall that conversation with Mr. Depp? Yes, those are my notes. Okay. And it's also accurate that patient is fearful of coming off of opiates but knows what he needs to do? Yes, that, re that reflects the conversation I had. Okay. And then patient also expressed some emotional trauma which causes him depression and anxiety? Also true. And if we go to um, Kipper 54 of Kipper Exhibit 5, um, these are the medications that um, Mr. Depp's assistant gave to you? Correct. And uh, going down, it's accurate where it, said, where it states um, that Ms. The patient states he currently takes oxycodone 50 mg BID and oxycodone 30 mg at bedtime. Yes, that's correct. All right. I'm going to scroll down a bit here. And we're going to go to Kipper 60 on Kipper Exhibit 5, the notes for 622.14. Um, this is this is again a note that you prepared. Is this a note that you prepared, Dr. Kipper? I'm reviewing this. Please. Okay, sorry. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> um, and um, you see uh, where it says in the middle, uh, patient spoke about his difficult childhood and current mood swings. Yes. Um, what did Mr. Depp tell you about his mood swings? That he that he had evanescent changes uh, in his mood from good to bad. And did he give any more information about what a bad mood what a bad um, mood would be? No, it was implied that that would be depression sadness what about anger uh, that was not that, I don't remember him saying that um, and, and it, this note also said that he'd been depressed for the past three days right above where we just looked yes and Alex keep this up but uh, but put out uh, Kipper Exhibit 6, please. Uh, 
Your Honor, we would move into evidence uh, DEP Exhibit 42. 42. Any objection to 42? And this is another redacted document, counsel. So, so mine's not redacted yet, correct? Yeah, I don't see any redaction. We have a, we have a, we have a redacted copy, um, which we can, we can provide. Also, uh, I believe this is unobjected to on our exhibit list. All right. So pending redaction? I well, I have, uh, the, the copy we had wasn't, didn't have redactions, so I'm not sure. I, I, non-redacted, I'm happy to have it included, but I, I would need to see the redactions. Okay. Well, I'll reserve on, on redactions then, as, as we did with 40, okay? So 42 in with redaction. Understood, Your Honor. Decisions, okay. Dr. Kipper, do you recognize Kipper Exhibit 6? Yes. And what is it? It's a summary of the treatment and encounter with Mr. Depp from June 22nd to June 24th of 2014. And, and, that, and, and you keep these notes in the normal course of business, correct? Yes. And, and again, they're meant to be accurate, correct? Yes. And these notes reflect that you saw Mr. Depp in Boston again? Correct. Okay. Um, and, and the second paragraph you write, uh, we discussed the need for compliance with his medications. We also discussed his nicotine habit and agreed we would address this when we completed the opiate and benzo detoxification. Mr. Depp's filming will be completed around mid-July and we discussed the plan detoxification. Mr. Depp prefers to do this in his home in the Caribbean islands. The anticipated duration is between 10 to 14 days and he will be completely isolated without any professional or personal obligations. Uh, does this reflect the discussion you had with Mr. Depp? Yes, it does. And uh, you also discussed that Mr. Depp understands that a nurse, Debbie Lloyd, will assist me with this program and I will initiate this withdrawal and supervise daily visiting him at the end of his treatment to design the next steps in his therapy. Um, and this protracted therapy will include a 12-step private counseling and personal psychotherapy and couples therapy with his fiance Amber. Both are in agreement to this plan. Um, does that reflect the conversation you had with Mr. Depp? Yes. And was misheard at this conversation as well? I don't remember, but the last sentence implies that both were in agreement. So it's very possible that she was, but I honestly can't remember. And um, during this um, detoxification, um, who was going to be with Mr. Depp at his home in the Caribbean islands? His fiance Amber and the nurse, uh, Debbie Lloyd, and whatever staff members he had. Where was Miss Lloyd going to be each day in the Caribbean islands? She was going to be on his property in a separate area. And who was administering the uh, medications to Mr. Depp? Miss Lloyd was giving these medications um, and, and supervising that. And there were uh, periods of time at night during the evening, early morning, that uh, Miss Hurd uh, was also helping with this. And would there be times where Miss Hurd was administering the medications to Mr. Depp without Miss Lloyd being present? Correct. Under supervision, but without being present. And when you say under supervision, what do you mean by that? That Miss Lloyd would give um, Miss Hurd the direction on how to provide these medications. It wasn't necessarily going to be physically present there when the medications were delivered to Mr. Depp, correct? Correct. 
And Mr. Depp admitted to you that there may be traces of cocaine since he'd been abusing the substance prior to the initiation of this program, correct? Is this note correct, what you what you write here in, in Kipper 6, that Mr. Depp admitted there may be traces of cocaine? Yes. <clears throat> um, okay. Can you, um, let's just go to back to Exhibit 5. And if we go to... You see the note of 624.14 at 1200? Yes. Is 1200 the time? Yes. And it said, are these, are these your notes again? These are my notes. Dr. Kipper, um, these 18 pages uh, came from your production and I'll, I'll represent to you that there were no drug tests uh, that I saw for 2014 or 2015 for Mr. Depp. You know why that is? The only thing I can, the, the answer is no, I can't, I don't understand that. Um, we had a flood in our office in 2014, October. Uh, the office above us flooded our office and the basement, which is where we kept certain records. but. I'm not sure which records relating to Mr. Depp would have been involved in that, but um, other than that, no. Would the uh, would drug tests for Mr. Depp for 2014 and 2015 would those also be kept electronically? Uh, no. Who did you work with um, to conduct the drug tests of Mr. Depp? Yes, I ordered the drug tests. And what company did you work with? Uh, it appears that it's MD Lab. That's the lab we use. And the drug tests uh, that we do have, uh, they, they came from your files, correct? Correct. And um, they're meant to be accurate, correct? Correct. And you would agree that drug tests that you took of Mr. Depp in the 2016 through 2019 period showed Mr. Depp testing positive for cocaine, correct? correct. Drug test showed Mr. Depp being positive for cocaine, correct? Yes, correct. Okay. And for THC, he was Mr. Depp was also positive for THC, correct? Correct. And for uh, benzo, is that correct? Um, the answer would be yes. I'm looking for benzo on the answer would be correct because he was maintained on benzos, benzodiazepines. Okay. How long was was Mr. Uh, Depp on uh, benzodiazepine? He was on benzodiazepines pretty much throughout our relationship during this period of time. Was it one of the objectives to get him off of, of benzodiazepine? It was, and we actually used a medication to accomplish that initially, but he didn't tolerate that medication very well. Not everyone does. So he was put back on his benzos. On page um, three of exhibit seven, what what's being shown here under where it starts with cocaine metabolites? This is a listing of substances with reference ranges. And I think if you scroll down, you'll see his specific analysis related to that. And it, on page four, Robert Wells was a name for Mr. Depp, is that correct? An alien? Correct. Yes, correct. Okay. And this, this is a drug test for 11 21 16 correct yes and it what what is it showing mr depp positive for what drug positive for cocaine amphetamines and benzodiazepines okay. 
And on page five, this is this is a test drug test for November 21st, 2016, correct? Correct. Okay. And it's showing what drugs is it showing Mr. Depp was positive for? It shows cocaine, benzodiazepine, cannabinoids, and amphetamines. And again, you did take, the drug tests were taken of Mr. Depp in 2014 and 2015, correct? Correct. Now, you had mentioned before, um, and the note said that the plan was for Mr. Depp to detox on his island in the Bahamas, is that right? Correct. Okay. Um, okay. And were you going to be going to, to the island at any point? Were you planning to? Yes. Was it going to be throughout Mr. Depp's entire detoxification or, or when were you planning on being at the island? I was planning to see him and did see him towards the beginning as we initiated treatment and towards the end when we were transitioning from that treatment into the next phase of his treatment. Now, on 8, 814, it says, arrived on island today, plan is for patients to continue to take routine meds through tomorrow at HS. At that time, he will not take his, take his oxycodone and detox medications will be initiated. Do you see that? Yes. Okay. Is that you arriving at the island or, or, or Miss Lloyd arriving at the island? That's Miss Lloyd. So that so that eight eight fourteen note is her note, correct? <laughs> so some of these notes are hers and some of these notes are yours? These notes going forward are her notes, appear to be her notes. Okay. What type of um what type of uh system were you putting these notes into? I don't understand your question. The notes just appear to be continuous, and you said some are your your notes and some are her notes. I'm These trying to understand how they got cut together. Because I put all of his treatment notes together to be okay. in one place. Would Miss Lloyd type these notes, or were they handwritten? She would type these notes. Okay. And then, and then, who put them? Who put them all together? Uh, I did. Okay. You see, eight, nine, fourteen. Patient expressed fears of never feeling normal without his drugs. Do that. I see that. Um, was was that? Did Mr. Depp ever express that to you? Yes, in some form, he he discussed that with me. see uh at kipper seven kipper 71 uh where it says md's flight has been canceled arrangements are being made for him to arrive on the island on 8 12 14. yes i see that okay so is, is it accurate that you arrived at in the at mr Depp's island on august 12 2014. is that accurate yes that's accurate did you go to assess Mr. Depp on August 15th, 2014, according to these notes? That's correct. And by the way, fiance is misheard in these notes, correct? Yes. 
And patient is Mr. Depp, correct? Correct. And this is a Kipper 77 on, on Kipper 5. Text from fiance, the patient is upset and irritable. MD and RN went to assess the patient. Is that accurate that you came to see Mr. Depp at one o'clock in the morning? Yes. And after receiving a text from Ms. Heard? Correct. And Mr. Depp, if the note says he state, he being Mr. Depp, states he had a fight with Beyonce and is questioning whether or not he can emotionally and physical, physically handle detox. Do you recall this conversation? I can't remember that conversation, but I do know that he was struggling at that point. And how was he struggling? Again, he was frustrated. He was uncomfortable physically. Dr. Kipper, this is a email. Well, do you recognize this document? I do. And what is what is Kipper 8? Uh, this is an email that I sent to his sister, Christy. Christy Dembrowski is Mr. Depp's sister? Correct. Okay. And you sent this email to Ms. Dembrowski on August 18th at 7.54 a.m., correct? Correct. This email was shortly after you had met with uh, Mr. Depp in the note we just discussed, correct? Oh, 754 Pacific. So um, it was sometime in the morning in the Bahamas, correct? I guess. I, I don't have that calculator in front of me. It, it's either three or four hours ahead. So it's either 1054, maybe it's 1154 in the morning. Some correct. I, I guess that's right. I mean, I assume that's right. Okay. And and it, you wrote this, e and why did you write this email to Ms. Dombrowski? We were planning to transition back to Los Angeles. We had completed the initial phase of his detoxification. And I wanted to update her as to my uh, impressions on how he was doing and how we would proceed going forward. And you wrote this to Ms. Dombrowski because you were concerned about Mr. Depp, is that correct? I wrote this so that she was aware of where we were in the process of his treatment. And you wrote this after he had an incident with Ms. Hurd, correct? I did not witness the incident. I wrote this after we were called to see him because there was an alleged incident, but he clearly was uncomfortable at that time when we came to see him. And again, we were getting ready to transition off of the island, and I wanted uh, Chrissy to have a clear understanding of where we were at that time. Can we pause? I, I was going to move for. And then at 1230. Thank you. I was going to move for the admission of Defendant's Exhibit 268. 268. And, Your Honor, uh, we're going to have a substantial hearsay uh, and speculation uh, objection to this exhibit. Uh, this is a communication um, from Dr. Kipper to a third party. It's hearsay from start to finish and not within any exception okay. to say nothing of the fact that it contains speculation. Okay. I, I think there is certain hearsay in the, first par in the first paragraph and in the third on the second page, but the, the, the rest of it is, is, is Dr. Kipper's impressions um, of, of Mr. Depp. It's an out-of-court statement offered for the truth, Your Honor. It's right. hearsay. I'm going to sustain this to hearsay, okay? Yeah, thank you, Your Honor. Mm -hmm. You and Ms. Lloyd uh, met with Mr. Depp? Uh, yes, according to these notes, yes. Okay. And do you know, was this now in the Bahamas or was this back in Los Angeles? I, I, I need to go back to the date, not the time. Can you scroll up? Thank you. 8 2014. And I'm just looking at my calendar. Yes, we were now back in Los Angeles. <clears throat> and in the 12th, in the notes on 1230 at, on August 20th, um, Mr. Depp stated he was done with the process and no longer wanted MD and RN services. You see that? Yes. You recall Mr. Depp telling you that? Yes. And you recall Mr. Depp saying that there was tension between him and Ms. Heard? 
Yes. Does the plan permit her to take a few days for herself? Uh, yes. <clears throat> and Mr. Depp wanted, is it true that Mr. Depp wanted to stop taking all the medications you were providing him? Uh, yes, that's reflected in this note. Um, now you mentioned you had, um, you did text with Mr. Depp on occasion, correct? I believe so, but I, I really can't remember any specific time or message that I sent to him. Dr. Kipper, um, Mr. Depp has produced um, a number of texts in this litigation between you and him and they're in this chart here and we're not going to go through all of them uh, i promise you um but i just gonna i want to ask you about a few of them um and we'll do this kind of throughout uh the deposition um uh, i have control here okay And um, on 8-21-2014, it says, Dr. David Kipper, this 310 phone number, was that your phone number at the time? Yes. Okay. And this is a text from you that says, um, to Mr. Depp, it says, glad you're better today. Respect you as much as I love you. You're impossible not to love, but an easier job not to respect. You're making my job a pleasure and honor and a few sleepless nights. Stop firing me. I know what I'm doing. You recall sending that text to Mr. Depp? Yes. Okay. How long have you been working with Mr. Depp at this point? As of August 21st, 2014. And can you define by working with him? Are you talking about specifically the detox or are you talking about our initial meeting? Well, even can if you, you go with the initial one meeting, second. how many months? Your Honor, um, as, I, as I mentioned in the deposition, uh, uh, Defendant's Exhibit 1063 is a long list of text messages between Dr. Kipper and, and Mr. Depp, a number of which are going to be testified to today um, or Monday. And I would just ask that the ones that they testify to, we would provide in, in a redacted form, which would just be the, just the text that they're testifying to. And it would be for a number throughout. I, I can get up each time, but I was hoping I wouldn't have to do that. Uh, Your Honor, I, I think we're going to have to maintain a hearsay objection. It's it's a it's a text by text issue whether it falls within any exception. Um, so we're not going to be able to agree that the entire document comes in. It's possible that some may come in, um, but I, I think that's going to be something that needs to be worked out between counsel right. af afterwards. So we can reserve it. He's still going to testify to it because we've already got right. I mean, Understood, okay. Your Honor. The testimony can right. come in, but that doesn't mean the document itself is admissible. I can reserve on ten sixty three, and we can figure out the redactions. Thank you, Your okay? Honor. So, about four months. Okay, and you write, stop firing me. In that four months, how many times did Mr. Depp tried to fire you? Uh, that was, I believe that was the first time. And again, this was in reference to him not wanting to proceed and not wanting our help. This is actually, I'm sorry, this is the second time because the first time was on the island just as we were getting ready to leave that he did not want to proceed. He didn't think he could do it. That changed after a conversation. He was back on board. And this came from, uh, I think followed that incident that you we just referred to in the notes uh, where we were asked to come and visit with them and where he didn't want to proceed. And again, at the end of that visit, he was back on board.
Now, on August 24th, 2014, shows a text when it shows him, that's Mr. Depp, to you, David Kipper. And Mr. Depp wrote, forgot to tell you, had a hopefully very positive and free of ego squawk with Amber last night that went very well, dot, dot, dot. And then I shot a few Negroes in a club on Sunset Boulevard. So far, so good, dot, dot, dot. Do you recall this text from Mr. Depp? No. Okay. Um, is, was that Mr. Depp's typical language? Again, I don't recall this specific email. So that may be, that may have been a, a an attempt at humor. Dr. Kipper, uh, Kipper 10 is an, do you recognize this document? Uh, no, but I'm, I'm looking at it. Let me ask you this. Do you recall if arrows arc at iCloud.com is um, Ms. Hurd's email address? Um, I assume that by looking at this document. Okay. Exhibit five uh, at Kipper 101 at 9-22-14 at 125. You see it says, um, Karen received text from patients stating that he had been in an argument with fiance and she had a quote nasty freak out and would like nurse to give him some quote some fucking knockout yum yum. RN instructed patients to take PRN Neurotin 300 mg, PRN and Seroquel 50 mg and that RN was on her way. Do you see that? Yes. Okay. And this is a note from Ms. Lloyd? Correct. Okay. Um, and then it says at uh, 3.30, upon arriving at the home, patient was sitting in kitchen with scraped and bloody knuckles on our hand, meaning his right hand, correct? Correct. Patient stated he punched whiteboard in kitchen after fight. Um, patient stated he'd been texting his friend explaining why he didn't show up to play music and fiance got upset he was not giving her enough support and the fight escalated from there. Called the MD at 145 and instructed to give a stat order of Ambien 10 MG to help patient get to sleep as he has an early work day. Um, do, do you recall Ms. Lloyd telling you about um, or visiting Mr. Depp and him having uh, bloody knuckles and a scraped hand? Specifics, I, I'm reading the note you're reading and yes, I remember there was an incident. And an incident where Mr. Depp had, had had scraped and bloody knuckles on his hand? Uh, as indicated in the note, yes. <clears throat> I did not I did not see bloody knuckles. Uh, I did not see a punched board. This was a communication that I received through the notes from Ms. Lloyd. And do you recall if you had the, a con it does say you recall, do you recall if you had a conversation with Ms. Lloyd about? Yes, I, I recall having spoken about there had been an incident. I don't recall the specifics of that conversation. Okay. Uh, on on uh, Kipper 5 at 10, at the date of 10.14, just to show you there, which is on Kipper 110 of Kipper 5, and then going down to 19.30, it says patient finished filming and was extremely agitated leaving the set. Patient kicked in the door of his trailer and refused to speak to director. Patient was verbally aggressive to another person on the set for no apparent reason. Per MD, patient is to take Xanax two milligrams to reduce his agitation at this time. You recall that, Dr. Kipper? I do remember this, this entry, yes. And you remember being told that Mr. Depp kicked in a door of his trailer and refused to speak to his director, correct? I don't remember the specifics, but I do remember there was some um, disagreement between Mr. Depp and the director. And, and 
where it says per MD patient is to take Xanax two milligrams to reduce his agitation at this time. Is that an increase of Xanax that he was to receive? Uh, yes. <clears throat> and you see at 10.15 at 6.45, it says patient awake and states he slept from uh, 2200 to 430. Patient continues to be agitated about work and is verbalizing having desires to escape with drugs. Um, it, do you recall seeing this note? I, re I Yes. Okay. And do you recall Miss Lloyd telling you this about Mr. Depp? I don't remember if she told me that he wanted to use, but I do remember her uh, telling me that he was upset. And is that reflected in the note of 845? MD informed the state of mind and continued ag agitated. He's on his way to assess patient. Is this um, can, can, you, accurate? can you show me that note? Um, yeah, it's right under, it's right here, 845. Oh, okay. The note's accurate that MD informed a patient's state of mind and continued agitated. He is on his way to assess patient. Yes. <clears throat> and then at 1230, as patient had fallen asleep and is now awake talking with MD, it has been decided patient is under too much stress as it would be best for him to stay home and rest today. You see that? Yes. You recall having a conversation with Mr. Depp about his stress? Yes, I do. Do you recall anything that Mr. Depp told you? You can answer. I, I remember he was very upset. I don't remember the specifics of that conversation, but I remember he was upset. And how was Mr. Depp displaying his, that he was very upset? He expressed himself very well that he had, uh, he and the director had some misunderstanding and that he was upset about it was mr depp yelling no was he was he doing anything to display his being upset other than his words just his words you don't um doubt the accuracy of this of this note though do you i can say that the note was written and and i believe it was good reporting I, I trusted my my nurses that they would report what they were told. Not for the opiates. <clears throat> Not for the opiates, is that what you said? Correct. <laughs> a positive for cocaine, for instance? Yes. Now, on November 17th, 2014, in 2014, Mr. Depp texted you and said, I have been to see Amber downtown. Yeah, yeah, interesting to say the least. Wow. Anyway, I'm still awake and don't foresee slumber arriving anytime soon to this broken instrument of a squash situated atop my shoulders. I would love to speak whenever you have. Get a minute, dear David. Though honestly, if I were you, Debbie and or Aaron, I, I would, capital letters, run for the fucking hills, three exclamation points. I love you, doc, dot, dot, dot. Cannot thank you enough for all you've done, not only for me and my poor pack of wolves and my sweet, capital letters, fucking brave Mikey, dot, dot, dot. These are the things that remind us that life should be a fucking gas. I'm waist deep in big muddy here, dot, dot, dot. Hit me when you're drunk, dot, dot, dot. It'll be far less boring. Love you long time, brother, dot, dot, dot. And of course, the beautiful and luminous Chanel, dot, dot, dot. And by now, eight foot six, Sam, exclamation points, mucho, mucho dot, 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 from, the, from those of us who are not as others, X, J, D. Do you recall this text from Mr. Depp? Uh, no, I don't. But clearly, I see that I received that text. Okay. Uh, Alex, can you put up um, Kipper 13, please?
do you recognize Dr. Kipper, this email uh, chain between you and Colin Cowan? I don't remember it, but I'm refreshing myself uh, with what you're showing me. Who is Colin Cowan? He's a psychologist that I had referred Amber to see. Are there, is there any, um, Dr. Kipper, are there any um, ethical rules to report uh, reports of violence if you were to be told of, them, of violence? If I were to see the violence, I would be obligated to, uh, uh, I would be obligated to um, make some reporting. I never saw any violence. And you didn't report either Mr. Depp or Ms. Heard, correct? Because you didn't see, it. your testimony is you didn't see any violence between from Mr. I and it's her and her to Mr. Depp, correct? We never saw violence between the two of them. Okay. You'd heard reports, but never saw, you never saw it as your testimony. Correct. Dr. Kipper, do you recognize Kipper 14, which it looks like is an email between you and Alan Blaustein? Yes, I, I, I recognize this. Okay. And who is, who is Alan Blaustein? Alan Blaustein is the psychiatrist that I referred uh, Mr. Depp to. And when you wrote this uh, email as of March 1st, 2015, was it your understanding that Mr. Depp was in Australia at the time? Yes. At some point you flew to Australia, is that correct, in this March 2015 timeframe? Yes. Was that the pl were you always planning to fly to Australia? to visit with Mr. Depp in, in March of 2015? No, I, I hadn't planned on it. What, what made you fly to Australia? Um, he had wanted to see me. Uh, he had just wanted to check in. He wanted, he wanted, he wanted my company at that point. He being Johnny Depp? Yes. Do you know when you uh, arrived in Australia? Um, no, I don't. I can't recall. Miss Lloyd had gone with Mr. Depp to Australia? Yes. She wasn't staying with Mr. Depp, correct? No, she, no, she was not. You know how far away Miss Lloyd was from Mr. Depp? in terms of time to get from where she was staying to Mr. Depp's house? I would, I would guesstimate somewhere between 20 minutes to 30 minutes. And when you went to Australia, how far away were you from Mr. Depp in terms of time? Exactly the same. Were you and Miss Lloyd in the same hotel? Yes. Actually, that isn't true. I was in a hotel around the corner from where the nurses were staying. Um, and in Kipper 5 at Kipper 157, you see this note for 3715 at 1130. 1130, it says, MD received a text message from client that he had been arguing with wife and that he cut it, had cut his finger. According to patient, his assistant and security were we're on their way to pick him up. You see that? Yes. Um, and whose note is this? That would be from Miss Lloyd. Okay. And is this note accurate? Yes, it's, okay. it's accurate. Okay. Um, now going back to Kipper nine. Um, give me a moment. At Kipper 7, at, at depth 7790, 
there shows a text from Mr. Depp to you on March 7th, 2015 at 5 p.m. And it says, hi, fucked man, had another one. I cannot live like this. She is as full of shit as a Christmas goose. I'm done. No more, all capital letters, three exclamation points. The constant insults, the demeaning, belittling, most heartbreaking smew that is only released from a malicious, evil, and vindictive cunt, uh, five exclamation points. But you know what? Two question marks, capital letters, far more hurtful than her venomous and degrading, endless, quote, educational ranting, dot, 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 three question marks. It's her hideously and purposefully hurtful tirades and her goddamn shocking treatment of the man she was meant to love above all, dot, dot, dot. He, here's the real deal, mate, dot, dot, dot. Her obsession with herself, two question marks. It is far more important, dot, dot, dot. She is, capital letters, so fucking ambitious, three exclamation points. She's so desperate for success and fame, dot, dot, dot. That's probably why I was acquired, mate, dot, 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 two exclamation points. Although she has capitalized, hammered me with what a sad old man has been I am, three dot dot three dots cowan has done me the most cruel of favors dot 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 i'm so very sad dot 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 i cut the top of my middle finger off dot 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 what should i do exclamation point two question marks except of course go to a hospital dot 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 i'm so embarrassed for jumping into anything with her dot 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 capitalize fuck the world three exclamation points jd do you recall this text from mr depp i i don't recall the text but i do recall him reaching out uh, after this incident, this, this tech is this text um, a typical type of text you would receive? Uh, in retrospect, and in reading this, no, I think it reflected the fact that he was injured. Right, and and Mr. Depp told you in the text, "I cut the top of my middle finger off." Correct. Uh, that's what it says. Okay. <clears throat> and then and then you responded, "Call me." You see that? That's the next text. Yes. Okay. Yes. And did Mr. Depp call you? Uh, I can't recall if he called me, but I know that I went to the residence. Okay. And did you go with Miss Lloyd? Yes. Okay. And back to Kipper 5 at 1300, it says on March 7th, 2015, patient was having a hard time leaving the house, so security suggested the MD and RN go to house to see patient. Upon arrival to house, patient was sitting in car ready to leave. MD assessed patient's finger and will spend more time with patient at the location he's being moved to. So did you see Mr. Depp in the house? Yeah, I saw Mr. Depp outside the house in the car. Okay, so this note, this note is accurate, correct? Yes. Was Mr. Depp intoxicated when you saw him? I don't. Was Mr. Depp coherent? Uh, yes, quite. He was quite coherent? Yes. What do you recall him saying to you? I don't recall the conversation specifically, but part of his finger was missing. Okay, and, and but you said he was quite coherent, so it sounds like you have memories of what he was saying. What do you recall him saying? I, I, I don't recall what he said. I remember that he was very clear in speaking to me. Okay. What did he, other than his finger, what did he look like? He looked like someone who just had part of his finger taken off. Anything, did, did he, did, what did the rest of his hands and arms look like? Uh, nothing unusual. What did the house look like? The house was a mess. Anything in arts you can describe about the house? There were things on the floor. There were things that had been, uh, thrown around it looked like there were just things were out of order in that house what what rooms did you see what rooms did you look at in the house i was in the kitchen and i believe i went downstairs don't really remember i saw it was more of the same that things looked out of place were were did it look like there was a painting on the wall? Someone had written things on the wall? No, I do, 
it did look to me like there was blood on the wall, not an actual painting. How long were you in the house for? 10 minutes, 15 minutes. And what were you doing in the house? I wanted to see what happened. I was trying to figure out what happened. Did you talk to Ms. Hurd? I did. Well, what did Ms. Hurd say? Again, I can't recall specifics other than they had a fight. And the specifics beyond that, I don't, I don't remember. Before seeing Mr. Depp that day, when was the, when had you seen Mr. Depp previously? I, I don't remember. Do you know if it was the day before? I can't remember. Do you remember if this was the first time you saw Mr. Depp since your arrival at in Australia? Again, I can't remember. Dr. Kipper, I'm showing you what's been marked as uh, Kipper 15. Um, and my question is, do you recognize this e email? Yes, I do. Okay. And it's an email, and you told Miss Lisa Bean to please print for the chart. See that at the top? Yes. Okay. So that is being printed for Mr. Depp's chart, is that correct? Correct. Okay. And uh, Raja Sahani emailed you, you see that? Yes. Okay. And he writes, thank you for your time, David. Attaches a copy of my notes for you to use as necessary. Re Robert Wells. And Robert Wells is Mr. Depp, correct? Correct. And this was from March 8th, 2015, correct? Yeah. Was it accurate that, he, that his hand, that his heavily contaminated hand and fingers with dirt grime and... Yeah, thank you. I, I was gonna move for the admission of Defendant's Exhibit 370. 370? 370, yes. Just one moment, Your And your honor, we would, uh, your honor, we would maintain our objections on grounds of hearsay, and your, your and, and the other objections asserted in our in our um, objections to the exhibits. This is an email communication between uh, two non parties to this case. Um, it's it's hearsay. It's not within any exception. Certainly not within the medical exception, um, and it's not admissible. I think it is in the medical exception because it's from one doctor to another doctor to treat Mr. Depp's hand. I'll sustain, I'll sustain the objection as hearsay. Thank you, Your Honor. That's accurate. Okay. Is there anything other than the coherent here that you find that's inaccurate? Uh, no, the rest of that seems accurate. Okay. And um, when you saw um, Ms. Hurd at the house uh, in this March 7th, uh, 2015 timeframe, um, did she seem like she was on, um, was she coherent? She was coherent. Dr. Kipper, do you recall seeing Kipper 16 uh, from the Gold Coast University Hospital? Yes, I do. And when do you recall seeing this this note? At the, the time on March 8th, 2015 or around then? It was around then. This, this was the emergency room doctor that saw him and then he gave him sort of temporary care mm -hmm. and then he was referred to, Mr. Depp was referred to the other doctor that we spoke of before this. Uh, who was the surgeon, who was the hand surgeon, I believe. Did you talk to this this doctor who wrote this note? Yes, I was present when Mr. Depp was being examined and treated. And at this point you were, as of March 14th, 2015, you were telling Mr. Depp that you weren't gonna be able to treat Mr. Depp anymore, is that correct? The purpose of this note was to make sure that he was strictly compliant with everything um, 
because he needed to have his finger reconstructed. And I wanted to be sure that he was following our guidelines for the, the drug treatment. Mr. Depp was not following your protocol as of March 1st, 2015, correct? Um, yes, I had concerns. Mr. Depp was not following your, your protocols that you were giving him as of March 14th, 2015, correct? Correct. Dr. Kipper, do you recognize Kipper 17? Yes. So you were withdrawing your care for Mr. Depp at least as of March 15th, 2015, correct? I was withdrawing my care if he did not comply. And as of March 15th, 2015, Dr. Mr. Depp was not complying, correct? Correct. Was Mr. Depp uh, Can you pause that again? So I'm sorry. Thank you. Um, move for the admission of Defendants Exhibit 391. 391. And, Your Honor, we would maintain our objections on grounds of hearsay, um, relevance, and uh, 403. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's hearsay, not within any exception. It's a communication um, from a third party, not admissible. It's it's a it's not hearsay. It's a letter from Dr. Kipper that doesn't have any hearsay in it, and it's it's. Well, it's hearsay because it's a letter from him out of court. It's a, I mean, it's, it's not offered for the truth of what happened. It's offered for what you know what was occurring with Mr. What was occurring with Mr. Depp at the time of March fifteenth. Well, that's for the, by, by definition, that's the truth Your Honor. Of the that, that's being offered for the truth. It's offered for notice of when Mr. Depp, when Dr. Kipper was. Not continue his care, Mr. Depp. I'll sustain the objection. Thanks. Compliant as of March 14th. The answer is the answer is yes. He was not compliant, and the problem at hand, no pun intended, was he was about to have surgery, and for him to have surgery on a finger, he needed to be strictly compliant with what his medications were, what his behavior was, and I did not think he was stable for surgery, and I could not clear him for surgery, and that was what provoked the letter. Right, and and Mr. Depp was, had been breaking promises to remain sober, correct? Correct. And then, did you ever uh, stop your care of Mr. Depp? There was a week, I believe, and I'm fuzzy on the time frame, but there was a short period of time after sending that note before he connected back with me, asking me to take care of him and promising me compliance. Was Mr. Depp compliant with the program going forward after March uh, 15th, 2015? He was compliant around his surgery and post-operative period. And then he became uncompliant again? I would have to refer to my notes, but I don't remember him being, I don't remember him being out of control. I remember him being, um, you know, compliant with what we needed him to do. There were times when Mr. Depp sort of went underground. Some of that time was when he was out of the country and was hard to connect to. Um, but I do not recall him going off the reservation as far as his drug and alcohol issues. You recall him testing positive for cocaine after March of 2015? I believe that, I believe so. I can't tell you specifically when. Okay. Uh, going back to Kipper 9, uh, there's a text message from Mr. Depp to you on March 19th, 2015. And he says, my, my sincere, most sincere apologies to you, Doc. I understand your decision based on my immunity to do the right thing. And I truly thank you for your concern. I must apologize for not having had the presence of mind to respect the man who has been the most kind and who has done more for me than anyone ever. There was no call for my spineless and base behavior toward you. I honestly understand the reasons for your concerns in your letter and you, 
and can say to you now, they are no longer an issue. Thank you for everything. I've chopped off my left finger as a reminder that I should never cut off my finger again. I love you, brother Johnny. Uh, do you recall this text from Mr. Depp? Yes. And is this the text do you recall where Mr. Depp was saying that he would uh, be compliant going forward? Yes. Okay. You're basing it off of this text. Was there any other conversations with Mr. Depp? We did. I know we had a conversation at some point around that time mm -hmm. that validated this message. And going to uh, back to Kipper five, which are again the, the notes. Um, and we're going to go to Kipper 167. And at um, for 413, at 1500, um, the note at the bottom says, uh, patient is in good spirits and said he's not smoked marijuana in three days, states he feels majority of his issues with his wife have been from him using drugs and alcohol. Patient states he'll no longer sneak slash use and wants to enjoy clarity. Uh, do you see that note? I see that note. And who is that note from? You or Miss Lloyd? That's from Miss Lloyd. Okay. Did Miss Lloyd report this to you? Uh, in this note. Okay. And there's no no reason to question the accuracy of the note, correct? Correct. Now, at Dep 168, um, 1215, it says at, on, on April 15th, 1215, arrived at the patient's home, assistant was in the hallway, informed RN the patient was in a bad mood and told assistant he did not need anything from him today. RN was left, let in home by security and knocked on patient's bedroom door to let him know she was there. Patient screamed, what? Um, are an informed patient she was just letting him know she was there and would be downstairs um rn a little more down rn left property and informed md of the events uh do you recall miss lloyd telling you about um these events of april 15th 2015. Uh, my memory is refreshed by looking at this note yes and and mr depp had yelled at miss lloyd is that right I'm not sure he yelled at Miss Lloyd. I think he just yelled and okay. wanted to be heard. I can't say I wasn't there. There's a text from Mr. Depp to you on April 15th, 2015. And he says, my dear brother, David, if there's a God, then I'm positive it's you. Thank you, darling man, I'm fine. I didn't know it was Debbie until I'd already thrown my voice toward the door. Thought it was Stephen, who is no small cauldron of hot water two exclamation points. I'll call Debbie to apologize, dot, 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 my boundless love and infinite thanks. So you recall that he texted you and called Miss Lloyd to apologize? No, I don't recall that specifically. I'm reminded by this note, but I don't recall that specifically. Now, Mr. Depp sent you a text on June 28th, 2015. It says, thank you, my darling Kipper. All those technical abbreviations left me fluxed and in the dark, three exclamation points. Soon, soon, I must see you and just hang out, three exclamation points. My deformed finger and I have no friends, three exclamation points. By the way, dot, dot, dot. Amber and I have been absolutely perfect for three fucking months solid, four exclamation points. I've locked my monster child away in a cage deep within, and it has fucking work, four exclamation points. We're goddamn best friends now, three exclamation points. Amazing, three exclamation points. Big love to you, my brother, dot, 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 JD. You see that? Yes. And, and and what do you recall you were, what is refreshed of your memory? That the, there was, obviously there was concern that he was taking more Xanax than he should have been. And I 
needed him to uh, tighten that up and to go back to what he was prescribed. And also there's a reference here to the phone calls. Um, I had asked him not to respond or not and not to engage in these phone calls because those were uh, all that always precipitated uh, problems between the two of them what, when they were in this when they were in a bad phase phone phone calls between Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd correct right. and Mr. Depp responds on July 1st 2015 and says I am and have been at peace for the last three to four months been amazing but she's somehow locked into this very unpleasant and belittling mode in the last three days the accusations the verbal abuse and insults stooping to one the most unjust you haven't changed you fucking desperate hypocrite you didn't you didn't out the monster away you're full of shit you're a pathetic fraud man you know how hard i have worked to put that motherfucker in its cage and i did that me i took all those other problems and rid myself of them there's a whole lot more i won't bore you with it the xanax takes the edge off just a little you know me it would take more than a few to really affect me. Seroquel scares me for the reasons I, I were off of it. If you're worried about the Xanax, prescribe me something different, but with more potency. I don't take them all that often, just when the brain is inundated with this horrible badgering and half truths from my wife uh, by, by the WSY. I don't know if you meant by the way. Um, do you recall this text? Um, again, I do in looking at it, yes. Okay, and, and Mr. Depp again used the term uh, monster, correct? Yes. And Mr. Depp goes on in this text. He says, by the way, um, he, he sends another, sorry, here's my, by the way, C Cohen should be run out of town in utter shame. He's a fucking sump who's done absolutely nothing but giving her the verbosity that she, off that she uses that she uses ever whenever she feels like she must explain to me the psychology of life three exclamation points, ludicrous, three exclamation points. Yes, sir. Cowan should be shot in places no one wants to be shot in, three exclamation points. He's a goddamn charlatan big time, three exclamation points. I'm not going to continue to pay the fucking yes man to do nothing but stare as her tits and agree with everything she spews, dot, dot, dot. Tell him to tell he's leaving the business or something, or I, or I too will become a regular client whether I am welcome or not, three exclamation points. Thanks and so sorry, I lobs G U. You recall, you recall Mr. Depp uh, informing you that he was upset with Dr. Cowan. Yes, yes. I, I remember clearly that he was upset with Dr. Cowan at a certain point. You know, do you recall this text message from Mr. Depp that I just read to you? Yes, when, in reading it, I do. Okay. All right, you want to go ahead and pause it? Looks like a good time to break it. It's five o'clock. Yeah, right, perfect. Thank you. All right, so any objection to breaking there for the weekend? All right. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we'll pick up with this testimony on Monday. Since uh, I'm not going to see you for three days, I just want to reiterate the same jury instruction I gave you in the beginning of the case when you were first impaneled. Not all of it, but some of it. I just want to make sure you understand for the weekend that you're not to read anything about the case. You're not to watch anything about this case. You're not to listen to anything about the case. This applies to television, newspapers, magazines, the internet, and any online sites. Further, you are not to read, watch, or listen to anything about the case on any social media networking sites, such as Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, or similar sites. In addition, you must not communicate with anyone about the case, whether in person, over the phone, by email, text, or instant messaging, or by any other electronic or non-electronic electric means. This includes your friends, family, coworkers, acquaintances, and strangers. I also instruct you that you cannot do any research or make any inquiries about this case, whether online or by any other means. What you learn about this case is limited to, limited to what you learn in the four walls of this courtroom when proceedings are underway. All right? So have a good weekend, and we'll see you uh, bright and early Monday, okay? Thank you.
working for the litigants. I'll see you back on Monday. Please no posting on social network, networking sites and don't talk to the press, all right? And for the attorneys, I will see you tomorrow at 10 a.m. for a long day. And I'm sure you've been doing your homework, right? So we should be able to get through a lot of deposition objections, right? Perfect. All right. Thank you. All right. We'll see you tomorrow then. Thank you.